while everybody is sitting down, I, I wanted to start uh, today by, you know, welcome, uh, welcoming everybody, but I also had a, a small story to tell. Uh, today in Guatemala, not today, but on the 14th, we celebrated a great victory in democracy. And why I bring up that today is because I think we're all interconnected, just as we are interconnected in the in the state. So you have a small country that goes from you know colonialism, dictators, genocide, you know corruption, uh, dictatorship all through my childhood, uh, deep poverty, persecution of the press, in a country where the elite, usually a very small group of people, is who ran the elections and who ran the country. So it's uh, you know it's a it's a miracle of uh, I don't know, of civic engagement. So this gives me so much hope, and that is the mindset that I want us to have today, the mindset of, uh, of hope. Uh, and we are here today in service of others, and our actions will have an impact in our communities, but also in the statewide, right? Not just in our communities, but in our state. The state has a pattern right now of escalating budgets, uh, and by districts protected by our, the 5% cap, on the tax rate. So let's remember that we're looking for progress together and we are using an equity lens and equity usually implies a call to action. And I just lost my other little piece of paper. Here. I can spread out again. Uh, but we have spent the past year uh, developing a strategic plan that prioritizes five core beliefs, right? transparent and responsible governance, community engagement and relationships, rigorous curriculum and instruction, uh, well-being, humanity and justice, community and belonging. And uh, with this, I want us to use those five um, beliefs for us to ground our conversation today and also remem remember our three pillars and our responsibility as a board towards the generations to come and as a district to making this district a sustainable district. So with that, if there are any members on the public or here, out on the computer or here, that would like to speak now, uh, please raise your hand. And if you're going to be able to be here through the budget presentation, you can also speak after the budget. But uh, I have, let's see, just to see. Okay, I see one, I see Ruben online, and we have one, hi, welcome, sir. Okay, oops, what happened? Okay, so we are gonna do our usual two minute. Yeah. Okay, there's two more people. Yes, oh yeah, Maria, Maria raised her hand online too. I see you now, uh, Maria, okay. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start online, and then go move into in, into here. And I just want us to remember that you know there's uh, uh, to to have our listening ears, and we're here for everybody, and and uh, to respect everybody's opinion on today. So Ruben, please go ahead. Okay, yeah. put me on the hot seat. Um, <laughs> Um, first, I apologize that I can't be there in person. I have other engagements that I have to go to. So um, uh, thanks for uh, letting me spend some time with you. Um, my understanding is that uh, this budget is reflecting about a 12% increase on um, a little bit fewer students with more, uh, with fewer students projected still. Um, Last year, this board, and actually, if my recollection is correct, the year before, this board made a very clear commitment that structural changes were coming that would bring student spending down um, and that you just need to stick with us for one more year. And I did last year, and I'm hearing a backing away from that again. And I believe this is the second time, um, which is incredibly frustrating to me. Um, so, uh, you know, my paycheck didn't grow by 12%. Um, when I look at the, the impacts of, uh, this budget, um, it looks like the median house value in East Montpelier is about $327,000 means median tax increase for those homes is about 1500 bucks a year. That's a lot. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's just a lot. Um, so. One of my frustrations last year is that the administration made proposals for changes that they believed 
as professionals that they could endure um, and that would not negatively impact the education in the building. Um, I, my understanding is that uh, a similar set of changes is being made and uh, I would very strongly encourage this board to follow your administration's recommendations this year. Thank you so much, Ruben. Thanks for being here. Uh, Maria? Thank you. Hi there. Um, my name is Maria Malekos. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. <laughs> Great. Um, I'll just do a brief introduction for those of you who don't know me. I've worked for the district for six years um, as a school nurse. I was your COVID coordinator two years ago um, and your school nurse leader uh, for the district um, last year before that position was cut. Um, I am also a taxpayer in the town of Callis and I am a parent of a U32 student. Um, I did send the board a packet uh, last week that had um, some uh, information about school nursing and what the recommendation is for full-time nurses, um, as well as the recommendation from the UVMNC pediatrician group to keep full-time nurses. Um, I'm more than willing to answer any questions that may have come of that, but what I wanted to use my time tonight is to talk briefly about delegation. Everybody seems to feel like if a nurse isn't in the building, we can just delegate her duties. Um, delegation is for a very specific task, as in I can teach a one-on-one -on -one how to recognize signs of asthma exacerbation, how to use an inhaler, and then when to come and talk to me. What I cannot delegate is nursing judgment, which means that if a child goes to the, the nurse delegate and says, I don't feel well, I have to go home, that child has to go home. Nobody there can make a clinical assessment or offer interventions because that is practicing nursing without a license and that is illegal in the state of Vermont. So two schools, Callis and Jody, are gonna have attendance issues without nurses in the building because if a child says they need to go home, they must be sent home. Nobody can say, I think you'll be okay, drink some water and come back in 15 minutes. That's a clinical assessment. I have concerns about the equity involved in that. Would anybody like to ask any questions? No thank, you. no, thank you. Thanks, Maria. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Amber? Hi, yes, I just wanted to piggyback on what Maria is saying. I have the letter that the pediatric office from Central Vermont Medical Center sent us um, in regards to the care that we give in our school. So first of all, I'm the one of the nurses at U32. And um, so they wrote that the pediatric group at Central Vermont Medical Center has greatly appreciated our collaboration with local school nurses and the support they provide our mutual patients. We agree with the American Academy of Pediatrics recommendations for a minimum of one full-time professional school nurse in every school. We rely on our partnership with the school nurse to help keep children with chronic conditions in school. At a time that we are facing unprecedented rates of pediatric mental illness and acute respiratory viruses, decreasing school nurse staffing would exacerbate a crisis. Please do not hesitate to reach out to any, to any of them with any questions or concerns, and they thank us for all that we do. And that was from all the providers at CVMC Pediatric Office. Thank you, Amber. Okay, we're gonna move to, uh, please go ahead and introduce yourself, Okay, I'm, can the um, microphone hear me? I'm Lydia Fazy, the school nurse at Doty School and taxpayer in East Montpelier. I know three of you on the board from my kids also being in your kids' classes, so this is feeling very personal. Um, my day is full of compliance reports, charting, paperwork, but also addressing children's ears, lungs, throats, hurt ankles, uh, abdomens, helping parents determine if they need to leave work, pull their kids out of school, and get them to their doctors. I'm also at school to manage emergencies. Last week at Doty Elementary, I was out for the day and there was no nurse at school when a child had a health event. The ambulance was called appropriately and it took 30 minutes, 30 minutes for that ambulance to get to Doty school. 
those were some pretty tense 30 minutes for the parent who was on the telephone line with their child down, for those responsible adults at school who did not have a medical support, and especially for the student. I care for the safety of these kids, and this type of incident will be a regular occurrence if no nurse is present to assess and manage an emergency like this. Please think of our children's safety first. Liability as well. You're setting up rural, isolated schools without a nurse. I oppose your cutting nursing positions for this district. That could have been your child, and it could have ended tragically. At the same time, I'm a taxpayer. I agree with Ruben, but I think that there's got to be some other place where you're cutting this budget, not with safety of our children. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other things? Yes. I can't see everyone, so I'm going to stand up. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can introduce yourself. All right. My name is Ainsley. I am a Callis Elementary School teacher as well as a business owner. I want to first most address my concerns to the pre-K pre program at Rummy and at Doty Elementary School. For me, the proposal to merge these programs is problematic for many reasons. Preschool is oftentimes a child's first exposure to their school. By asking these youngest learners in our schools to do something that we don't ask of any other elementary school age student, get on a bus, go to a different community, go to a different school, maybe where siblings aren't, we're not giving them the opportunity to start becoming a part of their school community. While I understand that we are in a rock and a hard place in these small schools and we don't have a lot of students, my life in my classroom, I have nine students. This can be hard at times, but there are opportunities for us to think creatively and collaboratively to create diverse peer interactions. The proposals are concerning for me beyond just this preschool problem that I, as a parent, am undergoing. I'm very concerned as a parent and as a teacher about the proposals to cut guidance. This is scary to me. It seems now more than ever is time to be investing in our students' mental health. For the first time ever, functional skills is an adverse effect for special education. Who's going to be doing these assessments? Who's going to be providing these services if we don't have guidance counselors? Instead of cutting these positions, could the board look at the $31.7 million in their fund balance and consider funding these positions until we know how we would like to move forward with our restructuring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other public comments? Okay, seeing, seeing none, we're going to move into our agenda and we're going to start with our budget, yeah. final budget presentation. Sure. And, oh, wait a minute, uh, Laura. Is, Laura Lee, did I miss your hand? Laura Lee, can you hear me? Are you there? You have your hand raised. We're going to move on otherwise. Okay, let's move on. Oh, 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 sorry. Working. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yeah. Do you have a comment? Great. I do. Sorry for the delay trying to manage my device. Um, I um, wanted to reiterate some of what Ainsley just spoke to in regards to any cuts in the guidance counselor positions um, with the new act coming through that allows students to qualify based on mental health and other social emotional learning um, challenges. We as classroom teachers could only find the best support through our guidance counselors. And by reducing those folks, you're taking away the people that support some of the most neediest students in our building in a lot of ways. And those students also impact my classroom as a teacher and can impact it in significant ways as well. Um, and I'm 
a mom of a child who goes to 32. I'm a taxpayer in Berlin and I'm a, a callous teacher. Like I have multiple roles. Um, the health crisis, the mental health crisis, you know, clearly isn't just within schools, but working with the youngest populations to help them become healthier mentally and emotionally is where we really need to focus some time in order to grow those kids into better citizens in our communities. And so I'm strongly advocating for not seeing the guidance counseling positions be cut. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, now for real, Megan. Sure. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. All right, so um, we're here to go through the final budget presentation. So, um, let's see, here we go. This is where we are in the process. And this is the uh, opportunity for the board to um, approve the final budget for warning. Um, this, because this is a presentation that uh, includes, is designed to draw the through line, there's a lot of repetition in here. So the board will see a lot of information that they've seen before um, and the most updated numbers. So just kind of uh, a heads up on that piece. Um, Today's the final budget meeting. Uh, we would have our annual meeting on March 4th and town meeting day budget vote. And this is what we'll do tonight. So this is the through line. Um, we're gonna start again with what our community is asking us to support. What are the, our vision, our core values, and what is our input talked about? Um, then we will talk about instructional program changes, um, which is really, talking to you about what will achieve the parameters you've set and allow us to achieve our district goals. Um, and then we will get into the numbers and look at the most updated uh, tax rate projections based on the proposals that you have seen. So this is, and the caveat here is it's still in draft form because we're still in the process of developing the strategic plan. This is version 3.0 of our core beliefs, um, but this is, this is at the root of what we want to do with students in the system for the next several years. Um, if we take that down a grain size, you've heard us talk about our pillars. This is really what guides the work within the district on the educational side of things. So clearly we have a focus on academic achievement. Uh, this year's primary work, like years past, is around multi-layered systems of support and implementing Act 173, zeroing in on assessment, we have a focus on safe and healthy schools, um, which is the social emotional learning component. We've also got a, a significant amount of district safety team work. And then our humanity and justice work, which is both standalone um, and a lens through which we look at all of the things. So we knew when we started the budget process that we already have existing work and priorities that we have to um, continue. So that is both requirements from the agency and from law. Um, it's also this board's focus on the achievement gap and it's our identified district work. Um, we've had some opportunities, some new this year, some are things we've done before uh, to keep staff informed about the process. The community has had several opportunities um, and then obviously the board meetings and we find ourselves here uh, towards the end of the process just a reminder these are the parameters that this board set this is the direction you give the administration to be able to bring you back a budget within your parameters that achieves um, our work within the system um, and just noting that this board did uh, take away the parameter that was there originally around attempting to bring the budget <coughs> under the inflation rate um, because it became pretty clear early on that that was a pretty unrealistic okay. ask. So those are your parameters. One of your parameters is to use these three lenses to do the work of budget development. So we look at education quality and evidence-based practice. We look at how we distribute resources across the schools in our system and we look at student need. So through those lenses, as a leadership team, we have to figure out how will we approach this work. Um, so the direction we gave ourselves based on the board parameters 
is we needed to prioritize our ability to achieve our vision within our current configuration. We understand that that puts some constraint around us. We know that the board has asked um, to bring our staffing resources consistent with ed quality standards. Um, and this year in particular, we wanted to make sure that individual schools could make recommendations based on the needs in their building. And in order to approach this, uh, we asked them to respond to revenue loss because of our ESSER funds within their building, and then respond to enrollment changes, but still maintaining education quality standards. So now I'm going to run through the instructional program changes. These are not changed since the last time you've seen them, so I will go somewhat quickly through the slides. Again, for folks that are interested, the electronic version of this has links if you want to peruse the ed quality standards. These are Vermont rules around how schools need to be resourced. So frankly, even if the board didn't want us to follow these, we would have to stay within these. This is part of Vermont rule. Um, and they're designed to, to help schools understand how to resource themselves in order to provide a quality education. It is also helpful because it gives us consistent guidelines across the system. You have seen this chart before. Um, it's small on the screen. Um, those of you who have the copies that went around and it will be posted on the web. Um, this is how all of our schools compare against education quality standards. The highlighted areas are the areas where there are proposed changes. So we are still within education quality standards. You will see a yellow highlight. That simply means that East Montpelier is at the top end, but still within education quality standards. This is an overview uh, in case it is helpful for the board to see it this way. This just talks, this is all of the proposals wrapped up into one slide, so across the entire district. Again, these are not changed from previous um, proposals. And then I'm going to go through the next several set of slides you have seen before, but for those that are coming to this process fresh, I just want to remind folks at a building level what the changes are. So um, we ha have been looking at our pre-K and kindergarten numbers, particularly between Doty and Rumney, and um, combining these two programs into a single program. Uh, allows more consistency for after school and child care. Right now, the small numbers don't, uh, don't allow us to staff um, after school child care components. So there is a recommendation to combine Doty and Rumney pre-K. Um, and there is a budget change associated with that. And I, you know, one of the things that we've talked a lot about and you've heard us say before, um, our primary goal is how do we provide good instruction to students and our biggest concern in these two areas, pre-K and this next slide, is we actually don't have enough students to provide robust education. So this board would be seeing these proposals regardless of whether or not you had given us a direction to reduce. This is really about program quality. Um, you can see very similar rationale. Uh, numbers in kindergarten are projected to be very, very small. Um, and on their own, we don't believe these class sizes are big enough to have quality um, instruction. So we would be combining them into a single class. Uh, as the board knows, we have a number of factors. Two major ones are transportation and sort of classroom space. But there are a number of factors that we'll be looking at when we determine finally where those will be situated. Um, but we know that we need to combine them for uh, effective instruction. These are the summary of changes within CALIS. So again, the direction given to all principals was respond to the reduction of ESSER funds in a way that makes sense for your building and respond to our enrollment changes. And these are the slides from the earlier uh, presentation where the board asked for more information about just how we support students. So I'm not going to read through these because you heard it last <coughs> time, but it is in your presentation. Jody, the changes are in the area of nursing and counseling. In Berlin, 
the reduction of a classroom teacher, this is related to enrollment, uh, the reduction of a school counselor, and the addition of a behavior systems coach, board certified behavior analyst, um, and that is partially funded. Uh, we have received the Project Serve grant. It is a 12 month grant, so the budget has to support about half of the position. That's why that number looks that way. In East Montpelier, there is an enrollment related classroom teacher reduction. Um, in Rumney, support staff. And there's a reduction of a school-wide behavior professional. Uh, that is not a net budget reduction. There's a decrease in Medicaid grant funds. And U32 would be looking to reduce a school counselor but add a student assistance professional, substance abuse professional. Um, that will be partially funded by an SAP grant. And there's a reduction of paraeducators. Uh, the board has heard us <coughs> remind them that these are currently unfilled. They are perpetually unfilled positions. And we still will have vacancies um, even with that. So that is a summary of information that you have seen before. Um, those are the changes being <coughs> proposed. And I'm going to turn it over to Suzanne for the numbers portion. Thank you. Uh, so last meeting we went over several definitions for a variety of factors that impact the tax projections. We've left this slide here to reference if we need to at any point and they'll also be on the website for people to reference. Again, you've seen this list of factors impacting the FY25 budget development and I'm sure you've heard them repeated on the news as statewide issues impacting school districts around the state. Tonight, we'll also discuss the impact of the changes in the CLA and possible changes to the property yield. So the increase in the local education spending for this budget is 15.57%, uh, up 4.9 million from 31.6 uh, last fiscal year. 4.9 or 4.7? Uh, up four nine three oh, four zero oh, seven nine. Thank you. Uh, Long-term weighted average daily membership provided by the AOE is an increase of eight point eight one percent from twenty one eighty four point five one down uh, up to twenty three seventy six eighty eight. The state excess spending per equalized pupil is suspended through FY29, and the FY25 spending per long-term weighted average daily membership will be compared to the FY24 spending per LTW ADM. Uh, if the district increases the spending per pupil by more than 10%, the tax rate will be subject to a review by a committee. The local spending per pupil is a 6.2% increase over FY24 from the 14.510 to 15.412. Equalized tax rate is uh, using the $9,452 uh, for property yield is an increase of 0.1397 or 9.37%. The equalized homestead tax rate is the rate a district would have for resident homes if all properties were assessed at fair market value. The equalized tax rate is then divided by the common level of appraisal to develop the individual town tax rate. All five towns in the district saw a drop in their common level of appraisal, which ranged between 11.56% in Worcester and 22.62% in Berlin. The CLA decreases mean tax rate increases. The chart above illustrates the estimated property tax rates for each town. If the 5% cap on the equalized homestead tax rate did not exist this budget year. So I'll just pause to give you a minute to look through the chart. And just a reminder board, this is what you asked us to show you so you would see what it would look like if we didn't have the cap. And we hope to have made a good distinction so it's clear to people what the actual rate is. But this is without that cap. Do we have one with the cap? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
29. <coughs> but that is all in flux still, so that could change this year. So, okay. you know, there's a lot of conversations happening up in the state right now, so I wouldn't count on that. But also, in, that's not just free money, then we pay that at the end of the sunset. Yes, we'll yeah. kind of talk about that. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So this slide illustrates the estimated tax increase that homestead property owners would see in each town based on homes valued at $100,000, dollars and $300,000 using the equalized tax rate of 1.6305, <coughs> which does not account for the 5% cap that the district will benefit from. So this is before the cap. Hence the word simulation as opposed to projection. So as mentioned earlier, the equalized homestead tax rate is capped at a 5% increase before the CLA is applied. The capped equalized tax rate is 1.5653, which is a reduction of six and a half cents from the calculated tax rate shown on the prior slide. This table provides the estimated tax rates by town after the 5% cap is accounted for. When the new CLAs are applied to the capped equalized tax rate, we see an increase in tax rates ranging from 24 cents in Worcester to 43 cents in Berlin. The current tax rate calculation uses the property yield $9,452 from the tax commissioner's November 30th letter. Again, this property yield may change during the legislative session. The estimated tax rates project the education tax rates seen on a property tax bill of a resident homeowner in the individual towns. Again, this table provides a picture of the estimated tax increase for homestead properties valued at 100, 200, and 300 in each town. The estimated increases for a $100,000 house value range from $235 in Worcester to $431 in Berlin. I'll give you all a minute to look at it. And this graph shows the distance between the capped equalized tax rate and the tax rate without the cap. With the current property yield projected at $9,452, the district would need to reduce the budget by more than $1.5 million to reduce the equalized tax rate below the 5% cap and make any change to the individual town tax rates. Operating with the current school configuration, this is $1.5 million that will be a burden that the district will start the FY26 budget cycle with. This burden doesn't go away from FY25 to FY29, it accumulates, which will create an even bigger tax cliff when the, cliff, when the cap goes away in FY29. So that's, Keely, mm -hmm. what you're what you're So in, in FY29, each year should we go over the cap, we'll have to pay that? We'll, have, we'll be on the hook, essentially. And Unless we've made cuts to get those expenses down, those expenses will still be there in FY, FY30 when the cap is gone. But we're not having to pay for FY24, 25's over it. It's not like no, they no, go, they're not going to go back. No, no, it's just, it's it'll, that budget will still be there to pay for in FY30 unless we make those cuts, the $1.5 million cut plus whatever next year's cut is, plus the year after that. So. It's a little bit like when the board chooses to use fund balance. It benefits you in that year. It feels the next year like you're starting off with the need to reduce. It's kind of the same concept. We know that the state's final property yield will likely change before the legislative session is over. Information received last Friday suggests a new property yield of $9,171 may be announced instead of the $9,452 that we've used for projections. Uh, this does not change the capped equalized tax rate or the estimated tax rates by town. It increases the amount the budget would need to be cut to make any impact on the tax rate for each town. With this change in the property yield, the district would actually need to reduce the budget by more than $2.6 million to make any impact on individual town tax rates. It would require approximately $2.7 million just to reduce the town tax rates by 
2.8 million for 2%, 2.9 for 3, and so on. Throughout this budget development process, we have encouraged the board to focus on the budget. We provide this information to the board to help connect the tax rate projections to the budget that needs to be warned for town meeting day. The only thing I would add, and one of the reasons we put this on here is just um, to reiterate that last point, which is the board impacts, the board can impact our spending. The tax rate is something that is largely happens afterwards. The board should know that the General Assembly is likely going to be talking about the number of districts who are hitting this cap because it's an unfunded burden on the education fund. Mm -hmm. We have expenses that are going to draw from the fund and we are capped in what we can raise in taxes. So the General Assembly will have to reconcile that in some way. And you won't know that way until long after the budget is put to bed. So it's just sort of a reminder, um, those, the slide, this slide where you see if we didn't have that cap, then you would see, um, you potentially would see it. That's if the cap stays in place. Um, but that's, it's just another one of the pieces of information that the board should have. Does the change in yield impact our local spending? The, you know what I mean? The, or does it bring us any closer to the 10%? No. no. Okay. That's based on our uh, long-term weighted average daily membership, uh, the, the budget divided by that mm -hmm. number of pupils. So is there a chance that the 5% cap will go away this year? There is a chance. After, it won't, after, you know, we don't, we don't know because it was, uh, it, it was, it was said to protect the districts that were going to be hit it. If, Worst, right? And and it was just that sunset in 2029 to help them. Mm -hmm. But right now, there's a lot of information that some districts are sort of padding their budgets, so it's making an unstable situation for the ed fund, right? Because mm -hmm. all of our, what we spend adds up, right? So it's, it's collective impact. So what we spend here, what we spend in Barry, what we spend, you know, it just all adds up, mm -hmm. and that is the cost of education across the state. And right. then we all split it up, right? So. It's just what we're worried right now is that then there, there could be, and this is a speculation at this point, right? But something needs to happen. It's unstable. We can many, many, many districts are hitting the 5%. And some, like us, it's like, you know, there's, we still are a year away of being able to do more change. But, you know, others are also being put in impossible situations because of PCB. So, so it's not all, you know, there's all reasoning. There's going to be some action needed, but we don't. We have to be prepared, you know, and make, and they're giving us a lot of great uh, telling data today, so we need to make an informed decision. And this is the last thing I would say from this presentation. We need to make an uh, informed decision tonight about setting our district in a sustainable way for the future. So the, are we able to rely upon that 5% cap in representing to our communities where we anticipate the tax burden will be, or can that, after the budget passes, go away if the legislature says, by the way, we're not going to respect the 5% cap because everyone was tapping into it and and it's going to overwhelm the collapse of the system. So it, our tax burden is going to be much different than what we anticipate. I would say it is impossible to predict, but that is a possibility. I don't want to say it's a possibility mm -hmm. and um, because what what we can share is the facts that you just described are true. Mm -hmm. More districts than anticipated, many more districts than anticipated hit the cap. Mm -hmm. the, it's, um, the system is gonna need some resolution from that. Whether or not the solution will be to remove the cap, that I don't know. But anything is a theoretical possibility, including other fixes that would move money into the Ed Fund, um, I mean, Vermont in the past has asked for budget reductions from school districts post-budget. That was a very challenging thing for school systems. So in other words, anything is on the table. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. With so, that, because that's what we're done. Yeah. <laughs> so one, one thing, though, that I, I want to say is that all that I've heard from the community, from other board members, whether I agree or not, I trust that those coming forward are using the um, 
um, the, uh, our new standards that we're moving forward. You know, whether I agree with what people are saying or not, what I'm hearing from people does have children in the center, does have. So, so I just want us as a board to understand that even in disagreement, I think all people coming forward, even around this table, are putting, um, putting those, those pillars into place. I believe that's what's directing us. And so, and, and if COVID taught us nothing, it should have taught us that <clears throat> while we are planning with configuration study and with everything, how we're proceeding these next five years, I cannot be daunted by what might happen in five years because we certainly five years ago didn't think we would, you know, have a pandemic. So again, I'm not saying willy nilly, woohoo, but what I am saying is that right now I need to understand the reality of if that cap isn't there, what those increases look like and also how turbulent it is. But to be honest, I can't put my thinking into five years from now. And I, and I think at this at this point, we're not, uh, and, and the board will have time to discuss actually, let's uh, to follow mm -hmm. the order right now, let's see if the public has some questions and then we'll move into discussion so we can ask more questions. Uh, this is the time for the public to ask any questions from the budget presentation, if there's any. Otherwise, we're gonna continue down our agenda. I don't see any hands up. Okay. There's one on the screen. Oh, one on the screen. Laura Lee? Laura, no, I'm saying that wrong. You're right. No, nope, I'm you're right. right. Okay. Laura Lee, go yeah. ahead. <coughs> Do you want to mute yourself? There. Um, yes. Hi. I, 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 uh, budgeting is not my forte. Can someone explain to me about this 30 plus million dollar fund balance and what, how, why that exists and what, if there's any way that can impact any part of this budget? I'm curious about that. I am too. I don't have a thirty million dollar yeah, to like, report about, so yeah. there's. I'm not sure where that num number came from. Yeah, I can explain fund balance in general. Suzanne will no. jump in and correct me. Fund balance is unspent money from a budget that gets carried forward, um, and only the board can decide how to use fund balance. And sometimes boards choose to use it to defray uh, tax impact. So they use it to support a budget um, and that has to be a board decision and a little earlier in the presentation we talked a little bit about one of the things boards have to have in mind when they use fund balance is it is a short-term solution that puts the budget behind the eight ball for so uh, for lack of a better word the following year because you effectively have to find that reduction so uh, fund balance is money that is was budgeted for in a given year and not spent. Okay, well, so a couple follow-up questions. One is, so if you don't see this 30 plus million dollar fund balance, I'm curious what it is. And secondly, um, I lost my train of thought. Um, nope, I don't know. That was my follow-up question, I guess. Uh, thank you. What, no, you didn't answer the question. Her yes. question is, what is our fund balance mm -hmm. amount? Oh, the question is, what is yes. the fund yeah. balance amount? Mm -hmm. I can look it up and yeah. And then, uh, and then while, <laughs> while Suzanne is looking for the fund balance, I also oh. want to put into con Oh, you remember your question. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. But so then, I guess another so and another piece of this that I think about is how the school district is looking at reconfiguring um, in terms of buildings and grades and just really looking, you know, big picture. And so um, if that plan is to make that happen in a few years down the road, then the, and I, I imagine that goal is really centered around um, a few things like saving money being a large factor in that, as well as probably resources and such that all impact money and budgeting in the end. So, um, I just wonder about how we can muddle through, I guess, this um, unknown time in a way to where we know that the goal is to look at everything in a big picture and bring the budget down through restructuring. Um, and I'm and I'm curious about the fund balance question. Thank you, Larry. 
Are you able to find that? No, I'm yeah, not yeah. there yet. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we we took a note. We'll we'll let you know what that is. I, I do want to clarify a, a couple of things that as as a board we have set the culture of not using fund ballots just to it's a one time artificial thing that we could do to offset tax and we have over the years have created that culture of not doing that. There's a certain amount of the fund balance that we put into our capital plan to be responsible and to be able to not have to go into a bond boat in order to maintain our buildings. But uh, we have had this culture of not using fund balance to offset the taxes because it artificially does it and it's, uh, it's a band-aid, it's not a real solution to our to, to our problem. So we just wanted to put that out. And then the other question that was asked was about um, the cost containment is, is the main factor. Cost containment is not the main factor, just the main factor for the board. And like we explained, we explained through the budget slides uh, what is most important and why we've been having the strategic planning of this year is to have strong core beliefs to start a, have a strong understanding of what we want as a board and as communities for all our kids. So is so that we don't base it just in cuts, but in what is best for all of our kids. Uh, Han, uh, Lisa, Hannah? Hi, um, just a quick clarifying question. In the agenda, it said public comment. Is this only specifically for questions right now? It's really comment. It comment for the budget, yeah, yeah. So a couple quick things. Um, one is uh, uh, one we've heard administration express that the cuts would still ensure robust supports for students. I think something I just want to point out is that when we've heard from staff, um, from teachers, from counselors, from nurses, we don't hear the same level of confidence. Um, I hear a lot of anxiety. I hear a lot of worry from those people who are most student facing. So I just want to um, highlight that when we've heard from staff at meetings and in other pu pu public forums. Um, and then the other piece is um, just with reconfiguration of pre-K and K, you know, I guess my question would be, is there any more information that we can get for community members like myself in Worcester and Middlesex of what that would look like? Um, I think for voters, that's important to know. Um, what that's going to look like for our communities and whether that might disproportionately affect one community and our youngest children more in terms of travel, um, in terms of where they're going, in terms of staffing. Um, so I think that's a question that still remains for me and that I that I wish we had that information before we voted. Um, and then finally, in the end, um, I, I've said this before in meetings, but I, I do think that it's time to be honest with the public. I understand we're in, in between a rock and a hard place here. Um, but if, if we need to make these cuts to lower the tax burden, so be it. But we need to be clear that there are sacrifices that, that we will be making for the students in our district, for the staff members whose positions will be cut. Um, and it might be time for districts to be sounding the alarm rather than um, ensuring the public that everything will remain the status quo. Um, because I, I'm not so sure that that is the transparency that's needed right now. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, hey, um, I have two questions. One, I was looking through this packet and, and thought I had found that figure. So first of all, I'm sorry if I was spreading misinformation on the foot balance. Is there information on how much is in that balance? Because it does seem, at least to me, like we are in this time of restructuring. We're looking at an interim plan until we move into a new plan. So this could be a good opportunity to use those funds to fund the position short term until we know what that restructuring looks like. I'm also wondering, wondering separately, um, to piggyback on what was just said, the cost associated with um, asking these students to travel. Have we thought about um, what it's going to look like to supply buses with five-point harnesses for preschoolers and how we're going to staff having someone on each and every bus to get our students on and off and what it's going to look like when not only we're having a bus driver shortage but also an additional staff member shortage on these buses. Thank you, Andrew. So I do have the fund balance coming yep. into FY24 is 2.7 million. And just as a reminder, the auditors will recommend that you maintain a certain level of fund balance. And Suzanne, in an earlier slide, had shared in order to actually impact your tax rate, you're, in, you're looking at $2.5 million. So that would exhaust our fund balance, which is not something, frankly, our auditors would 
mm-hmm. let us do to the extent that they mm-hmm. that wouldn't that would be uh, there is not enough fund balance to cover an impact tax rate thank you okay seeing no more questions uh, we're going to move on into the rest of the budget and uh, the rest of the packet and then the board is going to do uh, the board discussion uh, oh, there is one more oh, hand one more lauren hi sorry i joined in late i don't know if my there we go um we can see I you just, yeah. i had uh, a couple either question comments um my student my kiddos go to Doty. And I guess um, a concern I have about reducing the nurse and the guidance position is um, I'm also a school educator and I know when our school nurse is out, we kind of err on the side of caution and just send, basically send kids home because we aren't medical professionals. And I am concerned about having a nurse only half the time, um, my kiddos and the kiddos of Doty being sent home more frequently than at schools where there are a full-time nurse. I mean, this is aside obviously from the, not having someone there with uh, medical, uh, if there's an emergency with medical training, but just the, um, I know my kindergartner has been to the nurse many times this year, but she's always been able to stay in school because she is well, but needs a check-in. But I think when there's not somebody with that training, we err on the side of caution and just, suggest that the student go home and their parents can make that decision. So that is a concern that our Doty kiddos are going to be losing out on educational time because of that. And I guess also a concern with the um, information that I would like to know before voting with combining the kindergarten is the impact that has on the Doty first and second grade class of next year. Um, Because I know the first grade class is kind of a bubble class this year, and it's quite large, and they had to combine K-1 and 1-2. And so I'm wondering um, what that, I would like to know what the 1-2 situation will be next year at Doty before finding, you know, voting on agreeing to combine kindergarten, if that's going to leave a class of like 24 first and second graders for the teacher. So I'd like uh, those questions answered, please. Thank you. Can I ask that my Thank you, before? Laura. Uh, yes. Because, yeah. Um, so I don't think the community gets to vote on whether we're combining this. Right. So we make, should make that clear yeah. because what I hear your, your question there, Lauren, is that the community will have an opportunity to actually vote on whether we combine the preschool uh, and the one, two at Doty and Romney. Um, we're giving information, but that is really a board decision and it won't be a community vote. Just, just to clear up, because that's what I heard in your question, and I didn't want you to have a misperception uh, about that. No, I guess that would be part of the budget proposal, though, correct? Right, yeah. yeah. And so yeah. I would be voting, I would not support a budget where I'm not informed as to what that, if this is part of the budget, moving the kindergarten, you know, combining those two kindergartens, I want to know as a parent and person voting on this budget what the the snowball effect is for the rest of the kids who are not in kindergarten. So I understand that I'm not voting for that particular item, but it's part of the budget proposal. Great, thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Okay. Thank you. Do you want to steal her question? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. So the, okay, so this year at Nodi, we currently have a K-1 and a 1-2. We have a K-1 because our kindergarten numbers are small and because we have the 13 first graders, we were able to, that, that's a, a large enough N to split so that you don't just have two um, first graders in each class. So next year, we're looking at having uh, 20 or 21 in the one two next year so that's within by Doty standards that's a large class by East Montpelier standards that's a regular class thank you Kevin. okay we have a lot to cover tonight so we're gonna move into the student report we don't have our students with us today I'm looking at Steven for our students I, they usually text me, but I don't, I, they probably are. 
Yeah, uh, so we're going to, if Will or Linnea come, we will, I guess one thing that I could share on their behalf is that a bunch of us came to the, and did school visits last week, and that was really impactful, and it was great to be able to, to see the kids and see their classrooms, and, and we're going to continue to figure out how we can best share that information and how we can create a system so that we can actually have some outcome out of the the visits, but that was that was great. Uh, will you agree, Stephen? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear all of that. Oh, you I didn't. I'm hearing what you said. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna project to this side because I was projected to that side. But that we were visiting last week, uh, the classrooms. Yes. That Lena and Willow invited us, and that was something yeah, that we four, really appreciated. I think four members are able to come. For yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. and it was uh, five, I okay. thought. Five. But, five? Yeah, because Zach, was, Zach Ursula, oh, okay. Megan, mm -hmm. um, Natasha, and myself were here at different classrooms. Yes. And that was, really, you know, we really appreciated their effort. Their, nice. uh, it was really great. Willow was very excited. Willow and Linnea, but yeah, mm -hmm. Linnea, I shadowed Linnea and then met with Willow, and we all had a chance to meet with Willow too. So thank you. We appreciated that. So since they're not here, a Linnea has a hockey game in Stowe. That's oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I imagine. Yeah, that there's something going on. Okay. Superintendent um, and central office. The cult report was part of. Sure. The, I'm gonna give it to you, Megan. Yep. I, uh, there's a few different things. I'm happy to entertain questions. There's a couple of um, your initial procedure report outs. Um, and then a number of just miscellaneous central office updates. So um, happy to answer questions. I know you have a lot of discussion tonight. So I have one quick question. Yeah. I haven't had a chance to look at it. Um, I'm curious, though, um, if there's any progress related to the, um, the HR director position. We so there was in the previous, in last, actually December's Colt report. Yes. So Heidi Gimmick joined us okay. in December. Uh, she um, actually started the 20, no, a little bit before. The, yeah, so she's uh, been here for a little over a month. She's great. She's making her way around the district to meet with principals, spending time in central office. And is, is development of a, a stronger sub, sub list part of her? There are lots of, of things on <laughs> Heidi's scope of work, yes. But that's <laughs> Many, and that is one of them. Great. Recruitment is at yes. the top of their list. Yes. Great, thanks. Yeah. Any other, go ahead. So, <clears throat> one of the things I had mentioned, and I think tonight would be too, it would take too long, I mean, I don't know that it would take long, but I, it would be helpful for me as a board member to just hear uh, the ongoing work that's happening in terms of the PCV impact and just how how um, the spaces are being utilized and, and the plans around that. So, I mean, that's just something to put down the road and, you know. And a regular report? Yes, well, there is yeah. a report in this Colt report right, that talks about, well, because, I, you know, I think what you'll see in the Colt report is we've secured the contractor, they have started their work, and we don't know the scope of what happens until they come and report to us. Right now, where they are is their they give us a proposal that for how they will approach the um, analysis and then the Department of Environmental Conservation has to approve that proposal. They had it, they bounced some questions back, the firm is in the process of answering those questions. Um, and then also in there that I do think is important for the board to remember is the, you know, the cost of this, which is not remediation, this is just the cost to find out what to do, is about $215,000. Um, we, we can and will petition the Agency of Ed for some reimbursement for that. Um, it is not clear at all how much reimbursement we will get. Um, so that's the PCB update. I guess my question is, are there any spaces that were impacted and not usable? No. Okay. No. None so that are all usable. Yep, yeah. exactly. Um, Ian, the firm has replied to the DEC's questions, and it's now back at the DEC to approve. Once they approve, I can submit the request to the AOE for money, and I plan to request all whole, of it. The whole amount. Yep. It's how much is in the fund. Uh, I don't know who's come ahead of us in line, and it's sort of a first come, first serve. We know at least one very large one that's ahead of us in line, yes. <laughs> Do you have to pay out of fund balance, I'm assuming, and then get reimbursed? 
if the agency of education will reimburse us. Yeah. Okay, so we, yeah. that's how we're going to do that. We're going to pay out of the fund balance. Over at the capital. If we need to. Yeah. I mean, we might not need to, to have yeah. it come out of the fund balance, but yes. Well, I'm just assuming these guys want to get paid as they go along as opposed to They will be the submitting invoices. <laughs> My hope is that the AOE will, will pay for all of it. And that is what the AOE says, that we can put in for all of it. Yeah. And the assumption is that all of it will be paid, but there is a def and there is a finite Fine. amount yes. amount in that fund. Small. So the law actually says that we will be reimbursed for the entire cost, but the allocation that was given does not match the scope. Um, I'd be short. Does not match the scope. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> Since 1974. Jeff Jeffords. Road fight. Yeah. Okay. Anything? Any other questions for the, from the cold report? Just want to thank you guys for a very thorough cold mm -hmm. report. That was really yeah. helpful. Too. Um, then next we have uh, the Central Vermont Career Center report. I included the superintendent's uh, newsletter for you guys to see if there were any questions. And I also, in between that and the packet being sent last week, uh, we approved <coughs> our our budget and the tuition for next year for the Career Center is $18,901. Uh, the sending school district tuition, what we actually pay is 7537 uh, like we have been saying before, make sure to ask for your ballot for pay for the career to vote for the career center. It's not in addition that it's already included <coughs> on your on the allocation for the budget. Okay, so it's not extra, like we keep saying. So just remember to vote for the career center. Are there any questions on the superintendent report from Jody, or otherwise we'll move to the next item. The next item is the. Mm, Principal's report on page 10. Any questions? Not a question, just a comment. Yeah. I really liked that we put the ed quality um, references in at the top for our three priorities. Thank you. That was an ad from the ed quality committee's uh, request to say, I know that there's lots that you do connected to ed quality, but we don't know. So um, I would. Give the thanks back to the Ed Quality Committee. That was a good suggestion. I was happy to see it. <laughs> okay, I don't see any other hands up. And again, just thank you to the principals. It's really helpful to see it and see what is going on in each of your schools. Um, and then the VSBA report, we included in the packet uh, what I thought you guys possibly could have missed from one of our updates first. The, uh, but if there's any questions on that, uh, otherwise the only other update that I have uh, from Vermont School Association is that uh, tomorrow there's a webinar and communication about budgets. Uh, if you haven't signed up, you can, uh, you can just sign up and listen to it later or sign up. Uh, we share some of our documents in there. There will be a, three other board members. I, I won't be there, but there will be three other board members sharing resources, and it's a great uh, thing to to get involved in uh, as learning for new and old board members. And the, the last thing is that the update from today, it would be worth it for all of you guys to read it. And it talks about all of what we were talking today about the impacts of 127 and all the work is pretty dynamic in the legislature right now. There's a lot going on for uh, the impact of Act 1. And it's, we don't want to undo Act 127. Right? So we all have a responsibility to make sure that equity stays at the center of public education in the state. So read that update. Um, other than that, any questions? Okay. Seeing none, okay. we can move on into our own discussion of the budget, which is where we were saving most of our time for today. <coughs> So what I was going to suggest that, that we do is that we have a, a, a motion on the table and then we can all discuss and I'll just go one by, you know, one by one in, uh, in uh, just making sure that we uh, understand or have any questions or we're, we're hoping to 
to be able to pass the budget today. I don't know if any of you would be willing to. Go ahead, Tyler. I'd like to move that we adopt the draft budget for us. Thank you, Kari. Could I have a second for that, Ursula? Okay. And with that, mm -hmm. discussion. So now we we'll open the discussion. I thought that we would just start, and then if you want to pass. I'd like to use the restroom before we yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, so why don't we take a five-minute yeah. break, yeah. And, and then we come back. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, guys, we're going to get started. One minute, or a little less than a minute. It's 19, it's 7.29. 1929, the rest of the world. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty dark today. <laughs> 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 gently, gently. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank uh, we can get started. I'm not going to bore you with the criteria. I just, it's one simple question. Does this budget advances us towards our desired state? Uh, and uh, we will start in the corner and just go. If you're not ready, you can pass. And, but let's just get started with the motion that is uh, on the table right now. Am I allowed to share a letter? An email that came through yeah. from a constituent before and or sure. staff member. Um, so this is from Danielle Barclay. We all just received this. I don't know if everyone's read it. If everyone's read it. Then I yeah, we all it. we all shared it. Everybody read it. Yeah, we all read it. I'm ready. Yeah. I mean, we just it. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the subject is full-time nursing position, letter to the board, to whom it may concern. This letter is to advocate for a full-time nursing position at Callis Elementary School. I was hired as an administrative assistant to the principal at Callis Elementary at the beginning of the school year. When I was hired for this position, I was aware that I would need to fill in as a substitute teacher in all areas of the school and looked forward to getting to know the students better in those opportunities as they came up. I was not aware, however, that the nursing position may potentially be cut in half and that I would be asked to fill in on a more consistent basis in that role. While I am always willing to be flexible and cover whenever it is needed in the school, <coughs> I feel as though it would be a disservice to the students and the families of Callis to have someone covering in the health office consistently who is not a qualified healthcare professional. The thought of needing to make decisions regarding a student's health and well-being consistently without extensive training and background in that area is overwhelming. It also feels overwhelming to think of how often I would be pulled away from the office. We talk a lot about safety and making sure that we are increasing our situational awareness and it feels like safety would be taking a back burner if someone in my role were to be running back and forth from the health office throughout the day. Additionally, if we were in an emergency situation where we needed to evacuate off-site, having a nurse to help manage the crisis would be imperative. Thank you for your time and consideration in keeping a full-time nursing position at Callis Elementary School. Warmly, Danielle Barclay. Did I say her last name properly? Barclay. Barclay, thank you, Danielle Barclay. So, Maggie, while well, you're at it, then we received another email that probably people haven't been able to read. Right after that, there was an email from sure. Priscilla Gilbert. From Priscilla Gilbert. Yeah. Um, budget subject. Dear school board members, you have a daunting task in front of you tonight to preserve the quality of education in the district while also making necessary cuts to our expenses to ensure that our district can continue to best serve our students. Making budget cuts is always hard, and we all have priorities that we think are essential to the quality of education. Unfortunately, increasing costs and declining enrollment is not a sustainable model. I have no doubt that various constituents are lobbying that we not cut X or Y, but I ask you, as a board, to remember that your dual mandate is to provide for quality education in a sustainable model. Last year, the board and the community made a commitment to reducing expenses in pursuit of sustainability. I ask that tonight you remember that commitment and do what is best for the long-term health of our education system. As a mother, a taxpayer, and a former board member, I believe strongly in the importance of a strong public education system. 
The strength of our schools is part of what led my husband and I to buy a house in East Montpelier 21 years ago. I hope that we will continue to be able to offer an excellent education to all students by strategically reducing our expenses to ensure future viability. Thank you, Priscilla Gilbert. Thanks. And with that, do you want us to talk sure to the question? Yes. Yeah. So I, um, I'm not supporting this budget. Um, I've been um, uncomfortable with reductions in nursing and counseling from our first discussions. Um, I'm especially concerned about readiness for accessing academics if kids have unmet health and social needs, um, social uh, support needs. And as an educator, um, I also see classroom educators, some of whom from Calis have reached out to me directly to express concern about these reductions, um, approach me in public to talk about concerns about reductions in, um, in the staffing. Um, for both of those vantages, I'm, uh, I think that it puts uh, an undue responsibility on classroom educators um, <clears throat> to, to do more than they can do, even with all of the beautiful social-emotional learning um, systems that we learned about are existing in our schools currently. Um, I don't think that there that the needs of children presently are the same as they were pre-COVID, and I think we will see that play out in research in the future. This is, that there is no like going back to the way things were before. And while I understand that we functioned previously with less than full-time staffing in our smallest schools for nursing and counseling previously, um, I don't think that it's um, in our kids' best interest, and I don't think it's equitable, um, even if it's within educational quality standards. You, it's, you could have a smaller number, number of students, but if there isn't someone there all day, they're not there all day. It doesn't matter how many students there are in the building. Um, so that really stood out for me from a conversation we had several board meetings ago. Um, and I'm additionally, from the nursing standpoint, really concerned about academic access in a time when um, attendance is, is incredibly challenging. Kids are still learning how to participate their uh, like sustained attention in a classroom environment. Their, their um, perseverance and endurance for like academic challenges is not the same as it was pre-pandemic. Um, so to me that if there isn't a nurse in the building and the designated person is assigned to send that child home, those are in many cases kids who may have symptoms of anxiety that they can't express yet. So we're talking headaches and stomach aches and things that a nurse working with a counselor um, and classroom teachers might be able to identify and bring them back into class and now we're gonna send those kids home and they're not gonna access their education. So if we're really committed to being a, a district of high excellence, um, which is our reputation and we want to maintain it, I see those cuts as um, impossible from a, from a standpoint of education quality, not um, like an educational quality standard minimum, which is a minimum. It's adequate. We don't, do we want to be adequate or do we want to be excellent? So that's, um, that's why I, I can't support this budget. Thanks, Maggie. Kari? Can I ask a question? If we don't approve the budget, what's the process going forward? And should we have people who are saying they don't support the budget say what would need to happen to support? Like, like if those, would you yeah. just yeah, would you just true. raise the budget and then that's propose true. that to the to taxpayers? Is that what would make you make it palatable to you, Maggie? Can I answer that? Yeah, that is it. So our, my understanding Thank was you. that we moved up this entire process so that we could have these robust conversations in an earlier point in the, this, the year. And these concerns have been raised, and we haven't really had that conversation. We've just moved forward. So in my 
from my perspective, this is, these are conversations and plans we should have been making several meetings ago, not at this point, because we would have had time to do that. But in terms of funding, um, I would like to see those positions reinstated at a minimum. Like, that's something that I could get behind if the nursing and the counseling positions across the schools. We had Linnea sit here and express to us how important that was to her, and I think student voice is another component here um, that we've heard from, from a representative on our own board about the importance of counseling, even with the addition of the, um, the counselor focusing on drug and alcohol, SAP is that the acronym, which a, as a board we know from our meetings, um, emergency meetings, that like we need both. We don't need to eliminate one. And I also appreciate that the administration was in a, uh, is, was in a position of identifying what they could conceive of cutting. And we heard from you, please do not ask us to do more. So you did what you could. Um, but I, 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 I challenge the assertion that these are like necessary cuts and that people like that we're going to function just as well after the fact. So nursing, counseling. In the and I wasn't challenging you. I just yeah. want to like, no, no, I, I've been very clear on what the next steps are, or how we move forward. So that was like, yeah. a, which is problematic question that we as a board don't know what the next steps are. And here we are so close. Yeah, and I, and I think one, one thing to clarify, so I think we can express if we are, right now we have a motion on the table, we're going to vote the budget up or down mm -hmm. tonight, so that is the next action that we're taking. It, it, it is helpful to know, you know, just as a consensus part of and learning more about each other, why would it take mm -hmm. for you to be a yes vote? But I, let's just be clear, there's a motion on the table, that's what we're doing right now. Kari? Oh, yeah, so... Um I just wanted to reflect a, a minute on what a wild process this has been. Um, I highlighted in the packet, I thought the materials were really good, really nice job. I highlighted the word volatile, and, but the word that kept coming to my mind was bewildering. Because, um, as I thought about it, there have been at least five factors that are just way out of the norm this year. The first one is just the local spending climate. You know, we anticipated that this was going to be hard, and we identified nine hundred thousand dollars in reductions, and that's not an easy, easy thing to do. And yet, here we are with almost a sixteen percent net increase. I mean, that I mean, we all know the reasons, but that is just staggering. Um, and then there were two factors that actually were kind of benefits. One was uh, the new student count methodology. We thought that was going to be uh, very painful, and somehow it increased our student count by 200. I mean, it's kind of amazing. And then the um, tax rates being capped at 5% with a bunch of caveats. For a while there, it looked like we might be in okay shape this year. And then the other two factors washed over like a tidal wave. That the uh, projected yield, property yield, is, I mean, that's just staggering, the, the decrease there. And of course, that's related. None, none of these things are isolated. It's related to the to the ADM, um, and then uh, you know, significant drops in the CLA in all five of our towns, uh, and just leaves us in this in this no man's land where we we're not prepared to reduce by one and a half million, or maybe it's even two and a half million now, is what we're understanding. Um, we, that's just not tenable, and yet that leaves us asking our voters to support massive increases. We're talking 13 to 25 percent increases. Um, it, it, it leaves me feeling like we're always thinking about the sustainability of quality education with our budgets. This year, thinking about the sustainability of life as we know it in Central Vermont for all of us. Um, so, that's my preamble that uh, I, I just see one way forward. I get I maybe mean, a lack of imagination, but one way forward out of this. We need to, uh, as a board, adopt the least expensive budget that we can tonight. I, I assume that that's the one that's on the table. Um, and then we need to do our best job of explaining this to the voters. Um, 
you know, helping them understand where this came from and, and, and why we think they should support it. And then once this passes, we need to um, get on with the work of you know, finishing a strategic plan and doing the reconfiguration. We need the strategic plan because it reaffirms our values and it, it, sets, you know, it, it sets the strategies for how we approach education. And we need the reconfiguration because we have to reduce our overhead and significantly reduce our, our operational expenses. We, we just don't have a choice at this point. Um, so, yeah, that, that, those are my comments. Thank you. So you uh, support the budget? I do. Yeah. Okay. Jonathan? Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, so the concerns that I have remain that I've had for some time now, and many of those concerns really are similar to what Maggie's expressed, which is that, you know, we're, we're in a place now where um, things are different post-pandemic with, with, with children, I think, with mental health, with children, with mental health across the board, really, in the country, but particularly um, with young people. And, and um, so the cuts specific to nursing and, and counseling, I cannot support. And because they're part of this proposed budget, I can't support the budget as it is. So if I were to make a suggestion, my suggestion would be to add those positions back in. Um, and then I would have to reassess whether I would support the budget at that time. But um, I'm just very concerned about, um, about those things. Um, everything that I read or much about I read and what I see about the status of mental health among young people is really quite concerning. And, so it just doesn't jive with cutting those positions in my mind. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah. Diane? So I'm not quite there yet as I'm trying to balance everything that I'm hearing and the questions that are coming up, um, especially since the cuts of, that we're talking about, those um, of what they are. I was trying to find my um, document that shows the number of students currently at each building. Does some? Is it QS? It's kind of confusing, not really. I mean, are there, so is it? Can you expand on the question? Well, so I'm not, I'm cur I can't remember how many students are at each building. So, uh, yeah, I think I have them would be yeah. a few presentations before. Right, yeah, and I was trying, and I, of course I cleaned up the bag, so I didn't have that. Okay. So while, uh, <clears throat> and I appreciate it because I just need to be looking at that as I'm thinking of other things. The other thing that it does remind me, as you're saying, Kari, is that we're, we're talking about life as it exists and how do we advocate. I really feel that we need to be very in tune. Thank you, uh, McCann. Uh, okay. <laughs> My best friend, McCann, found it. <laughs> so thank you. I'll write yeah. this down real yeah. quick. So it reminds me that we need to be very aware of what's going on in the legislature and especially that one step removal of what we know is needed and that we understand the decisions that are being made. Thank you, Ursula, I see yours too. And, um, and, the, um, and also we need to be working with our communities and our families to be sure that they also know the tax abatement options that are out there, that that is also part of our job regardless of if we pass the budget, if we don't pass, I mean, whatever this board puts forward, we need to be sure we're working with that. I need to take a look at these numbers and hear a little bit before I can state yes or no about. So you're passing right now? Yes. Okay. It's hey, a long Ursula? way to pass it. I support the budget draft that we have in front of us. I, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> we've gotten really thoughtful although difficult cuts proposed by our administrators and they're difficult because these are people that they've worked with for a long time and they are community members sometimes and so that makes them family and it's difficult to consider making cuts especially when we hear people come up and talk about the importance of nursing and counseling but we need to remember that we have a fiscal responsibility to all of our community members 
and these tax increases with with the five percent cap are going to strain a lot of our families which are going to see a negative impact to kids in those families i think we need to remember we've been visiting each of the schools at the beginning of the month and we've been getting um, the social emotional learning presentations from each of our principals and they integrate the social and emotional learning into their whole school system right now and i just really think we need to like pay attention to the fiscal responsibility that we have to have in that these are cumulative increases so last year we looked at a almost 13 percent increase to our budget and we said we're going to look at things next year and we need to make cuts now even with cuts we're looking at a 15 percent spending increase I can't imagine costs are going to go down considerably next year and we have this cap that's going to artificially hold money that's just going to keep increasing as we go along that we're going to feel five years down the road that can make a lot of this reconfiguration study and work that we're trying to do very difficult if we don't have the money to actualize it. So I am in support of the budget as it stands. Thank you, Ursula. I can. Um, in the beginning of the budget presentation, um, we always talk about the, the why, you know, the well-being, the self, safe and healthy schools, student need, equitable distribution of resources. And I agree with Maggie in that cutting um, the nursing and counseling, especially from Callis and Jody, um, does not, to me, fit into that framework. Um, those are the two towns that you know the medium median gross income is below the Vermont state average. Those two towns in our district, um, those are the town. You know, those. If we're gonna be not having a nurse in house, be sending more kids home, be having having more parents have to take off from work in those towns. Um, I, I just I can't support that. Um, I would not, I, I totally hear the concern, the fiscal concern, um, and I don't want to ignore that. It does just, I do have a problem thinking five years down the line because we're, you know, in the next year or two, under theoretically undergoing a big reconfiguration process, which will change the landscape completely. Um, so looking at this one year, I, I just can't support those specific cuts. I'm not saying we have to add them back in and not take anything else out. Um, I think part of it is my frustration too because I've brought this up at every presentation and I've made, I've made some suggestions, other people have made some suggestions as to where it would maybe feel better to make some changes. Um, and I can be more specific if you want my suggestions again. Um, but, you know, yeah, okay. can't support as it stands. Thank you, Michaela Natasha. Um, I'll echo a lot of what Michaela and Maggie said. Um, looking at our three pillars, these cuts go against what those three pillars stand for. So it seems kind of counterintuitive to say that this is what's best for kids. If we say we stand for these things, yet the cuts we're making are going to directly impact those services. Um, over break, I ran into some people I went to high school with. Two of them said that one of the guidance counselors at the school saved their life. So the idea that we are talking about like cutting guidance counselors when they have that kind of impact on students um, does not feel responsible to me in terms of what is what's best for our students. Also, just looking at, I know we've been talking a lot about nurses and, and the uh, counselors, but even with library media, when we talk about equity being one of our pillars, our library media specialists in this district have been spearheading so much of the equity work that our students are experiencing and so to cut those positions is going to cut the uh, ability of our students to continue to participate in that kind of access to 
um, various types of media which will support what we what we claim as a district is important to us in terms of in terms of equity. Um, I do have a question, and and I and this kind of goes with McAllen said is we keep getting the same proposal, um, even though the community and board members have expressed concerns about cuts. What would happen if we didn't make those cuts? What what impact would that have on the tax rate? For the towns, if and we'll, let's just say we just stick with nurses and um, guidance counselors, what impact would that have? The tax rate does not change. So we're making cuts, but it doesn't change the tax rate. So if the tax rate isn't going to change, why would I, as a taxpayer, want to lose resources for my students if it's not going to impact my tax rate? I, and that, um, that's that's <laughs> that's not a question I'm expecting anybody to answer, but I mean that's something that I'm thinking about. That it, if if it's not going to impact my tax rate, why would I want to lose resources for my kids and other kids in the system? So um, those are just some of the thoughts that I have. So as of right now, I would not support this budget as it's presented. Can I just clarify that that statement because of the five percent cap as mm -hmm. it exists? Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. But in this current year, right. with yes. the current yeah. context, yeah. but that's yeah. what we're dealing with mm -hmm. in yeah. this yeah. current year, mm -hmm. with the current context. And I am in agreement. Um, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be looking down the road, but down the road, we are going to have finished our strategic plan. We're going to have finished our re our reconfiguring, and in theory, that reconfiguring of our district is going to help adjust address some of these things so to me it it makes sense to think about the budget for the district that we're dealing with right now knowing that it's going to be changing and then we can think about the budget once we know what those changes are I'm also afraid that if we start making changes now and we reconfigure that depending on what that reconfiguration looks like what if we need to have some of those positions back <coughs> so I just I, I I would not be able to vote yes on this. I'm, I'm going to let everybody know. I'm not going to try to answer. Go, go ahead. Yeah. yeah um, I, I want to thank Scylla and Ruben, I think they were, who, who called us out and asked us to be accountable to our statements last year uh, about fiscal responsibility. And just for the public record, so for those who aren't keeping tabs on our configuration work, we, we are working towards a configuration plan that is in the works. It's, it can't be ignored as far as I'm concerned in the context of this conversation. Um, and I think without the configuration, my vote would be different, but I think I will dissent. I think, um, you know, for me, I think there's a lot of truth in what Lisa said. Um, I think people in good faith are coming at this from different directions, and um, our administrators did a lot of hard work and made a lot of hard choices, and I think they can run their schools. Uh, with the cuts, but we also see uh, counselors standing up together, and we see nurses standing up together, saying that you know there's there's harm to the student bodies um, from losing those positions. Um, I also think, you know, Takari's point. I think the the specter of you know affordability in Central Vermont ceasing is a scary prospect, but I think you know. To uh, uh, to other points, you know, so is so is the mental health health crisis, and um, and that's that's real for me. Um, yeah, I'll just stop there. So, did you support I'm a budget? Dissenting. Dissenting. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, 
I need to pass for just a minute. Thank you, Kelly. Is that? Overall, I would support this budget. Um, I think as we look at the challenges that are fa that face that face students, is a lot. You know, as you know, as we look at sort of the thing, you know, all the non-educational things that come through our doors, a lot of them have root, roots in economics. And I think to keep to keep you know, you know, to sort of keep pushing this into not sort of to keep not worrying about. The commitments we've made in the past about bringing down costs yeah, really bothers me. Um, I think, to, to, to address what Natasha said, I, I mean, I think we're in a tough, I think the legislature's put us in a really tough spot, honestly, with this question about how the 5% cap works. Um, I think it, it makes sense for any given school district to say, let's get someone else to pay for things. But that money has got to come from somewhere. It's coming from us, one way or the other, even if we're not sure where they've squirreled that money away. Um, and so I'm not, that's why I'm not able to think of this as, why, would, why wouldn't we just, you know, you know, you know, you just, just take the extra positions. Um, if there was one thing I were to, to add back, I think I could see myself agreeing to add, to add the nursing back in. I think that, I think there is a substantive difference there where there's, a, there's an element to it where it's a capacity service. Um, you know, I, work, I work in healthcare, I've worked in issues with, with healthcare capacity. You know, one of the big problems we have is with labor and delivery of, you have to have an OBGYN and you have to have an anesthesiologist and it doesn't matter how big your program is. And so, in that way, I could I could see it with nursing. I could also, frankly, see there's a lot that you can do by picking up the phone and getting and getting an opinion, and no one's you know, And I think we need. To, I think there is you know, if we do pass the budget as written, I don't. I would want to hold the administration accountable to make sure that that the nurse doesn't belong to the building that they are in, that they are that they are providing advice, that they are providing. Council that someone you know when there's not a nurse in a physical building they, that that building can pick up the phone and and get on get on the phone with a nurse to get to get an input on that um, and I think that's a doable thing. Um, but if that's if that's a thing that's going to get a budget on the table, that's a thing I could could agree to. Um, I think looking at some of the other things, looking at your know, library media, looking at counseling, you know, when I look at these ratios, I think it looks like you know we're really bringing we'd be bringing. Them, you know, Callis and Doty more in line with you know, with some of the other schools. You know, if, if my kid needs the counselor, if they're at a, if they're at a, a larger school and because there are more students, they're with another student, they're still not available. And so I think those ratios have a lot more to say about the, what the services, you know, the equity of the services there. So I'll stop there. Thank you, Zach. Chris. Did I hear an amendment? No, he's not. He supported the budget. I, I didn't make an amendment, but I, 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 I certainly know where I was. Okay. Hey, lawyer Chris. Um, go so, ahead. Uh, we're talking about, I think, primarily about nursing and counseling. Uh, so, I have a question on the, um, on the counseling. Uh, does the Berlin position that was hired? Um, have any role in substituting for counseling at Berlin? And the same question for you, 32. Yeah. Substituting, no. I think there's a, I think, and Celia might be on the screen, but I'll, oh, somehow I popped off. Um, the analysis of what the system needs to support students is that they need the lens of a counselor and the lens of this behaviorist. And so it is a trading of resources because they feel like that better meets the needs of the system. And Stephen, oh, Celia's oh, there. Oh, Celia's here. She Do you can want answer to this better unmute than me. Celia, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so there is... Good. So she's she's going to answer yeah. for you. Oh, okay. Megan, Megan said it beautifully. I, in looking at our system, I think that the having the lens of a BCBA and the school counselor will best meet the needs of all of our students. Okay. Um, and so, it, Thanks, Thank you. Stephen, how about the position at U32? 
So we're re going to reconfigure the way that our school counselors, I mean, we have several, so we have uh, different options. Mm -hmm. So we're reconfiguring in a way that will provide a different service through our drug and alcohol counseling and be able to still provide services to students um, for um, school counseling services to students as well uh, with the existing staff or the remaining staff. And I would just I would just offer as well a little caveat is that this is also some of our beginnings of our long term. How do we reduce the overall um, uh, number of FTEs in our building as we reduce the number of students in our school? Because over the next three years, we're going to be almost 100 students small. And so those those decreases are already in the elementary school. Thank you. Um, and so in looking at the numbers, it seems that we're, <coughs> in terms of the nursing, um, we're talking about a budget that would reduce the Catholic nurse by 0.4, right? Uh, and the Doty nurse by 0.5, uh, and no other nursing reduction that I'm aware of? Correct. Okay. Correct. And then we have the counseling uh, of a reduction of 0.6 at Calus. Uh, point two at Doty, uh, and then um, a full at Berlin, um, but it's kind of substitute at least a, a at least a re reorganizing yep. how that how that mm -hmm. service is provided, uh, and then a reduction of one at U thirty two counselor. Okay, so the numbers to me the numbers are not I mean especially for the nurses is not significant. I mean, we're talking about 41,000, well, 42,000 at, uh, at Callis, and I think 51,600 at Doty for nursing services that we hear are pretty important for maintaining not only students, but I think staff health. I mean, it's, a, it's an overall picture here. Uh, and, um, you know, that, that number just doesn't seem like something that cannot be found in this budget such that we are cutting these positions. And I would say the same thing would apply, at least for me, for the Callis and the Doty counselors, because again, you're talking about uh, an amount that's about maybe $90,000 for the two of them, maybe 98000 And so a combination of those two items, I mean, we spend more on a ball field, reconfiguring a ball field, and I know people can say, <laughs> that's the, uh, that's the infrastructure project, mm -hmm. but we're talking about our human capital here, mm -hmm. uh, our human infrastructure, which is equally, if not more important, than the physical infrastructure that we have. Uh, and, when, and we also don't see any administrative cuts, not one. And that is problematic for me, because if it's a community, then the burden, and, and it really does fall upon Doty and Callis. The two of the, you know, more needy, I think, and I hate to say that, maybe I'll get hate mail from the Doty and the Gallus community, um, but the more needy community um, schools that we have in, in our district. So, um, unless we're going to re at least reinstate those minor cost items, um, I will not support the budget as it's currently, I support the number, I don't, I don't support the allocation, and unfortunately, cannot support the number if I can't get a different allocation of, of the resources in that budget. Uh, and I think it's, mi it's minor, very minor. So, thank you. I'm going to go back to Kelly. Um, yeah, this has been a really, a really good discussion. The last time that we met, I asked people to not frame the nursing as underserved because of the ratio, but rather whether we needed to have a nurse in the building every day for all the hours of the day. And that came back very clearly tonight and through emails that we got um, that that is a real issue and it has an issue on parents having to come and get their kids from school it's a safety issue, um, and you know, I my heart just breaks with the amount of 
tax increase that we're going to get, and I feel so much anxiety that the 5% cap is not going to stick for some reason, and that we're just building up this debt and this debt. And um, I think that if it weren't for the reconfiguration coming, where I see hopefully some restructuring and some money coming back in, and I'm so glad that we have that and we're not a district that's dealing with this that doesn't have <coughs> that sort of out in those options, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, and so I, I also think that I, I kind of stand by the ratios for the guidance counselors, for the counseling positions, that the ratios are actually bringing Dodi and Rumney back into the, the line with the rest of the elementary schools. But I think for, I would propose that we put nursing back in. Um, it's $93,000. I don't see it being a significant enough amount to, to have it so that kids don't have a nurse in school, especially in the rural and as you're saying, kind of, um, yeah, underserved areas. <coughs> with the caveat that like next year with reconfiguration, we need to make sure that that, you know, that we are making those cuts and that we reconfigure in a way where that's possible. So just to so, clarify, so you're not a, accepting the budget as it is? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Joshua, I'm going to go back to Diane and then go to our clerk. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go back. I just said, Joshua, is Joshua is it okay? I'm going to go back to Diane and then and to Joshua. <laughs> or either, either way. Are you ready now, Dan? Or? You better be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. So again, you know, being from Berlin, where the changes are different, um, it is helpful for me to hear, because I'm a board member that's, you know, um, my responsibility is to the, to all communities, and so, it's really, what I was also reminded about, too, was our discussion when our, well, ESSER monies made it possible, and ESSER and the need due to COVID for us to increase nursing, that I remember the, the conversations about the relief that was there, not just because of COVID, but because of the nursing needs that you can't plan them and schedule them. So that's... The long and the short of it is similar to what you're saying, Chris, is that I, 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 it, it's a bit of a long day. I, I agree with the numbers, but I don't agree with the cut in the nursing. And I think that that's, um, you know, if it means that uh, we vote down the budget um, in order to have a change in that allocation, Um, I'll be quick. I support the budget, uh, the motion uh, as it is. Um, this conversation feels very familiar from last year to me. Um, you know, we start talking about, oh, well, this money really isn't that much more of an increase. Um, and, you know, again, I feel like we're not following the advice of our administrators when we ask them to do this work. Um, I think that has an effect on them, has an effect on the way they can effectively govern their schools. Um, yeah, I, I just think we need to start practicing getting our spending in line with the realities um, of our community. So I support it. Thank you, Joshua. So I got an email from Amelia. <coughs> she's sick and she couldn't come today, but she wanted to make sure that we knew that she supported the budget. So she sent us an email so she could have a vote on the on the budget. Uh, I think the last one left is uh, is me. I think there will be no surprise that I support the budget. I, I feel really, uh, you know, first I want to thank the administration for all the work. I, I, I really feel like they were listening to us in a way that they asked the question differently to their principles so that they would they are the experts and know what the student need is and they propose the cuts that they felt would meet student need and I I feel like uh, we are undermining our administrators by not yet again 
listening to the information and and I and I get it it's, it's difficult and it is uh, there's a lot of emotional stuff with the with uh, the feedback that we're getting from some of our own from some of our own teachers too but but I think that we have to understand that that's why we hire experts right that's why we hire a superintendent that's why we hire the best principals that, that we have right they are proposing a, a cut that would get us in that path to sustainability and adding the to answer that question that has been you know adding for us right now that back would be to me like padding our budget right a, again with money that we do not have even if it doesn't do doesn't impact the tax right now we are adding to the burden on the state so what we are going to get to have a nurse here Winooski is not going to get to have the resources that they need for a much more like really much more students and with higher needs we are going to be responsible and I, I don't know I, I see I see the faces I can send you the, the there were three uh, letters sent today from the Winooski district to to the state house and it's just they are being they did not add two hundred thousand dollars that they needed and they knew that they because they don't want to pad their budget in order to serve their kids Mount Mansfield it has added money to their budget. Milton has taken out of their money out of their budget because they, uh, this is uh, something that everybody's saying in the state, we are not being responsible. So the consequence of that is that we can, the legislature could, legislation could come back to us that is, um, you know, sort of similar to what happened with Act 46. We would be forced, instead of us having control of what to do, we would be forced to make decisions that we might not want to make. So we were taking the risk of putting a budget out that might not be voted. That, that would be my biggest concern. We are putting out a budget that might be voted down by our own district. And what are we going to cut next? So I would just say, so that was a long way of saying I support the budget. Um, so let's see, if I, you had your hand up. One, yeah, two, three, I, four, I just five, I, six, I one, two, three, four, have concerns six, seven, about um, using Winooski and Milton, which are two communities really struggling with, with educational equity and mm -hmm. dynamics in their school districts. That, you know, if we're going to be leaders in equity work, these positions are critical to that work. And I don't want to be in Milton or Winooski's situation with the issues that they are struggling with. I would like us to be doing what we're doing, which is getting on a path towards meeting the needs of all students and being inclusive. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm sorry that they didn't include those funds because those are critical funds, I would imagine, for them to be moving forward. So what I'm saying time. is that they did not include extra money yeah, so I that understand. they're making sure that I they understand. are meeting student needs, right? I, they're making sure that they're meeting student needs. They could have, because of the tax impact, added money because they would they would have more money to work with the budget. So what I guess the comment is, is if it's about equity, it, it is with the allocation of resources that we're doing right now, and I'm looking at our administrators, it, we are being equitable to our students, to our staff, and yes, we are rural. Some of our communities are more rural, and we are gonna have to be more flexible in how we provide provide services, but we're not, uh, we're not going to make any impact again for for next year. So, I, right now the the vote fails. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, six. three, four, five, six. Yes, yes. So I do. So, I, there's just a couple of uh, statements I would make. So when I apply my thinking, my understanding of this, and I can honestly say I came here tonight thinking I was going to vote the budget in. It really is the dialogue and the conversation, and it is looking back at these, these core beliefs that, for me, this is what resonates. And it resonates about the communities, and it resonates about those. And I guess I take exception to, um, to statements that I am trying to undermine the administration. I am not, but my job here is to balance what I hear from community members with also what your recommendations are, with also what um, what we know, and it ha it is not to be disrespectful at all, and it's um, it is not meant to undermine. We, I realize if we come to disagreements or dis decisions that 
aren't the same, then that is potentially how it, how it feels. But again, as I said before, all of us are applying the pillars, are applying the core beliefs, but the, these do not come with, it, thus you do X, Y, and Z. We are individuals who come to this applying what we're, what we're learning and knowing and into that. <coughs> And I'm going to echo that because um, having a different opinion than our administrators is not undermining them. It's not disrespectful. Um, when we go to our doctors and we get an opinion, we say, um, well, that's nice, but I don't think I'm going to do that, doctor. Are we undermining the doctor? If we go get a second opinion, no, we're not. Uh, it's, it's an adult conversation, and we can have different views of things, and we can reflect that we want at least a different allocation, and it is not... It's not undermining, it's, it's democracy, actually, um, to have that type of conversation, and um, unless we're just gonna be rubber stamps, because yep. if we're gonna be rubber stamps, we don't even get to have this budget discussion. We just, whatever the administration presents, we approve, uh, and that's not what we are, and that's not what we should be, because then we don't, the community doesn't have a direct input um, into this budgeting process. So I, I, I don't like when, when a contrary view is cast as undermining the administration because I don't think it is. I think we're very supportive of our administration, mm -hmm. frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, and I, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean that. to say that you're not on, that you're not supportive. But there's one thing. Like we are supportive of our administration. It's a, it's a different lens when we're working on the budget and trying to move the work forward towards the budget. So I'm not saying that you do not uh, you undermine because you don't respect or you don't honor our. You know, I, I know that you guys all do. We are all doing this work together. It's complicated work. So how do we advance it together? We are back in the same place where we were last year. Uh, Natasha and then Ursula and Megan has a... Um, I just, I want to piggyback on what um, Diane and Chris just said, because this is something I've been thinking about at, for a couple board meetings now. And it also, when Lisa mentioned transparency, that struck a chord. Because I feel like when the comment is made, our administrators are telling us what they, this is how they can run their schools. They're telling us this is how they can run their schools after they've been told you have to make cuts. Mm -hmm. So that's, it's not, it's not an accurate statement to say, this is all they need. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's what they can make do with knowing that they have to make cuts. So I just, I, I just want that, I want to make sure that if we're going to be transparent, let's be transparent. Our administrators did the best they could with the parameters that were given to them. I do trust that our administrators thought very long and hard and, and considered all of, the, all of the possibilities when coming to the conclusion of this is what we can run our school with. But again, it's within the framework of what can you run the school with knowing you have to make cuts. So I just, like, I just feel like that needs to be said, especially in light of the, the comment from the community saying this needs to be transparent. I have very real concerns with the democracy that we're upholding when not all of the voices have been able to come to the table. There are people who have not been able to come and voice their concern with the increase in the spending for a variety of reasons. They could be working right now. They could be working two or three jobs and they can't make our meetings. But we have not heard from everybody. And we have a responsibility as this board to everybody in our community, including the ones who are not going to be able to afford the increase that we're projecting this year with the cuts. This is going to affect their entire household. When you look at these not so insignificant increases, it affects their kids, which are our students. So we need to be fiscally responsible, and I understand that we're looking at reconfiguration and we've had the strategic planning that we are doing, but we can't think that it is a magic band-aid that is going to cover every expense that we make now. We're going to find ourselves someplace five years from now that reconfiguration cannot fix and we cannot afford, and we will cost people out of our communities. People will not be able to live here. It becomes an unequitable community because they can't afford to live here. Megan? Thank you. Sorry. I can also hold my, I have a request for the board listening to the conversation, so if it's better placed at the end of the board comments, that's fine. Okay, Zach. 
we've talked a lot about how reconfiguration is going to solve all these problems. And I, I remember a couple of a couple, you know, a couple of months ago I made a comment about sort of what I'd be willing to if um, you know if we could bind a future board and it, that generated some laughter. And I, and I acknowledge that that was a, a weakness in my argument. Looking at what I saw as an audience member last year and what I'm seeing this year. It makes it really hard for me to put faith in a future reconfiguration yeah. um, based on what we're seeing now. I think that if I'm gonna, gonna go back to the thing I know we can't do, if if we could bind a future board, I would support a lot, you know, you know, a lot of the things we could do to create a bridge. But given that Last year it was next year it's going to be the big changes, and this year it's next year it's going to be the big changes. I don't, I have a really hard time supporting something that is based on something that we can't actually bind ourselves to, and we have a history of not, you know, not following through. Maggie? I thought, and Perhaps this is just the piece that I'm remembering most significantly, that one of the things we committed to last year was moving up this process in order to have these robust conversations and not be pushed up against the deadline. And as other folks have spoken to, I think this vote reflects that we have expressed concerns and not necessarily felt heard. Um, and so that it's twofold, it's, you know, when are we beginning these conversations? What are we considering? What is, what is being um, explored um, in addition to what administration might recommend? Is there, and we've heard from the community at earlier budget, at the budget forums, I think it was, was it at East Montpelier, or am I blending that with last year? Our community face-to-face -face budget forum, we heard, you know, think creatively, and I think the nursing, the remote nursing access, telehealth is a great example of that. Um, but um, it's, it's not just the fiscal piece, it's having the opportunity to discuss the fiscal piece. And I thought that was what this was supposed to accomplish by moving, moving the schedule up this year to start the conversation earlier. Can I say something? Yeah. I remember two meetings at least when Megan was like, shall we readjust our parameters? You know, at one of them, there was crickets. One of them was get rid of the, you know, under inflation spending. And that was our opportunity to talk about the parameters. And we knew, and we had already received the information about the proposed cuts. And still the parameters weren't adjusted. Um, and it, I don't know, it just seems like this, it's a little late to be having this conversation, like what do we do, like I support the money, but I don't support who's getting cut. And um, I don't know, we could have put that in a parameter. Um, it just feels like a little late now. Well, I guess this maybe speaks to board education, because when initially asked our feedback, I was under the impression that we were being asked to inform a future budget draft. Mm -hmm. And then that wasn't the case. So maybe it just speaks to more education about the process, because I don't think I'm the only one who was somewhat confused by that. Mm -hmm. I think it's. I think my comment it makes sense now, and I'll put my comment and then the request. I, so I've heard in a few different ways. Um, actually, I'll pull a thread. Uh, kind of use Chris your comments in a similar way. I've heard a few different times. Um, how come nobody brought us other drafts? So administration is charged with giving you all the information and our recommendation. And each budget meeting, we do listen. We do hear all the feedback from you, from the audience, and our leadership team is coming back to you with the same recommendation. So it isn't, kind of to Chris's point, it's not that we're not listening, it's we are taking in the information and this continues to be our recommendation and that is with all due respect and to the comments. And so it goes the other way as well. And I think that is why you have not seen changes recommended because we maintain that this is our best recommendation within the board's parameters to deliver what you want us to deliver. So 
that's why you haven't seen changes. Um, my request or my ask, because this budget does need to be put to bed, um, you know, in, in various different ways, there's been a question around, uh, you know, changing the number at the end, and it is specific around counselors and um, nurses. Um, I don't think it would be fruitful to vote the budget down and ask us to come back with a different plan because I think that you will hear continued recommendation. The board has the prerogative to change that bottom line number and say, we would like you to put in X position. Um, <coughs> And I would just ask that the ask be that specific as opposed to go away and bring us another proposal. Because I think what you are then doing is asking us, you have asked us, and we have taken it in, and we have deliberated, and this is still the recommendation. You are the board. You can still give us direction. Um, so my ask, I guess, is more just don't ask us for another proposal. If you are disagreeing with what we um, are, are recommending, and I use disagreement with no uh, judgment involved, then just be clear about that. Because I, I don't think we have time and I don't think it'd be a useful exercise. Yeah. And that better explain sort of what I was trying to say. You know, it's not necessarily undermining, but we keep asking the experts and this is what they keep sending us back and we did not ask for a draft two. We gave them their input and said, this is what we're saying, come back to us. Daniel. Um, I just wanted to say I'm extremely uncomfortable raising the local Ed spending number. Um, I think probably the other people who oppose the budget feel similarly. It's just what are we comparing it to? You know, not having full time nurses in our schools feels like a pretty uncomfortable ask as well to us. Um, I guess I'm going to say this with eyes wide open as a member of the finance committee and not make eye contact with my fellow committee members. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, don't worry, we're going to stare at you. <laughs> I think it's worth considering a one-time use of fund balance. We could stay well above the 5% of annual operating budget by putting in at least the nursing positions, if not also the counselor positions, we, if, by my back of the envelope math anyway. We would stay above, so I think somewhere around 2.3 million. Suzanne, please correct me. Um, would be would be five percent of our operating budget. We're at 2.7 now. So if we took a hundred thousand out of that, we would still be well above the five the five percent, which I think was referenced as a recommended amount. We're not going to raise tax rates more tonight by doing that. We can more or less preserve the budget as it was recommended, just adding those nursing positions back in. That's my suggestion. Would we stay under the 10%? Per yeah. student. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, exactly. I would support adding the, the nursing positions in. I, I, would, I don't think we should take that out of fund, fund balance. I think we just add that to the budget. Um, based on Based on the incentives that the state has given us, which are not a very good set of incentives, taking it from the fund balance is just giving the fund balance to the state. That's true. Um, and so I would I would support adding, by my calculations, re restoring those nursing positions would be ninety three thousand five hundred forty six dollars to you know, you know you know to the budget to have that be the sole change. Thanks. I think yeah, I would go along with that. So I would, I would Could you do a quick math on the, I don't have a calculator in front of me of what the increase would be then from the 15% would be an additional 93. Oh, on the, the percentage increase. Yeah, yeah. thank you Chris. so much. So, uh, Suzanne, mm -hmm. unless you do another calculation for <laughs> that. Um, Sorry, I'm going to move to amend the budget problems. to add 182,495 dollars, which would restore nursing um, at uh, Doty and Callis and um, counseling at Doty and Callis only. And I, my calculation for that is $182,495. Um, and I tend to agree with Zach on not taking that fund balance, because that could be my other goal. First question is 15.57%. Yeah. <laughs> So it's 15.57% now if we added 
just the 93 in for nursing. Mm -hmm. How much would that change? That's with the 93. Oh, that's, oh, it's so it's just the 93. The percentage yes, mm -hmm. then it doesn't affect the percentage. Mm -hmm. And then what about the 180 or whatever? All right, sorry, put it in the wrong box. Uh, Chris's question, answer to Chris's question, it makes it 16.14% increase. And then I'm going to rewind and go back to Healy's. 16.14. Put it in the right box. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's really uh, Keely's answer was just nurses. And Chris asked for nurses and counselors at Doty and Callis. Does that ripple into that local spending increase? Does that it increases the local spending by that percentage. Well, you know, this it's one it's under the eight, you know what I mean? How much does it increase our yeah. per long term completed student? Per pupil, yeah, it's not going to be enough to hit ten percent. Ten percent, no. Okay. So we should be clear on what the there's there's, there's two oh, proposals. Geez, there's a couple friendly yeah. amendments being yeah. proposed. Yeah, I don't know which one. Well, you are the only one who said amendment. You're the only one who said amendment. Well, we can. I'm not trying. Yeah. 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 Not, yeah. Not, yeah. not a race to the courthouse here. We can, have, <laughs> we can do both. So we could, can we discuss before we? Yeah. So could we just? We have to have one amendment. Second, you need a second. Do you need it? Yeah, we need an amendment. Yeah. I move to amend. To amend which? The budget to yeah. increase by the 184, 182, 495. Which but is I, the 16.4%, 16 percent So now we can have a discussion. Um, can, we, can we have two amendments pending at the same time? No. 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 no, we have four down one amendment. So, okay, so, so we did both this one up or down. Well, yeah. why don't we do this one? You, you do yours. I'll withdraw mine, and then if that passes, then I'll add for the counseling as a separate amendment. Mm, that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it's two so, pieces. Okay, so you withdraw your, I'm withdrawing withdraw your amendment. amendment. Right now. So. Lisa, did you get that? No, I'm not <laughs> following. <laughs> okay. Sorry, we're really, and it's getting, and it's getting, and it's getting late. Sorry about that. So. Don't write what Chris just said. Seth, okay. Seth is yes. making an amendment on the motion on the floor. Yeah. I, I, I move that we amend the budget to restore the, the to restore the nursing positions at Doty and Callis to, to full time, adding ninety three thousand five hundred forty six dollars to the proposed budget. Okay, sorry, Zach. So to restore the nurse positions at Callis and Doty, and then what was the dollar amount? Ninety-three thousand five hundred forty-six. Yeah. Thank you. Is it second, Mike Keeley? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So discussion or? Yeah, I have a comment. Yeah. So I'm going to vote against that, and I think that. Uh, Politics is all about expectations, and I think that when you're asking 
voters to accept a, say, a 20 or a 25% increase in their property taxes. They're expecting that we're at least trying to bring the tax rate down, the spending down, not yeah. increasing it. Yeah. So I think there's a good chance this budget won't pass anyway, but I think we seal the deal by adding. And I think that's a mistake. So there need to be more discussion, or should we just vote in order to speak? Go ahead, Daniel. I'll, I agree, and I'll vote for it, for this amendment. I, I, I do think that using fund balance is maybe less responsible for our district, but I think there's a symbolic difference between using fund balance and adding to the local ed spending, um, you know, because we're further exploiting that 5% cap protection rather than, you know, using our own resources and, and putting ourselves on the line in that way. But, um, yeah, it sounds like it's, it's sort of the will of the majority to maybe support this. I, I think it's important to add them back into the budget somehow. Do you want an add uh, from the amendment that would be funded at fund balance for the nurses? No, I'm just going to wait and see what happens here. <laughs> <laughs> any, any other discussion? <laughs> okay. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment as read by Sack and second by Keeley, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. 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 So I'm going to meet raise of hands. Uh, so if you uh, if you're for it, please raise your hand. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the motion carries. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So now I'll move so, to amend the budget uh, to um, add uh, eighty-eight thousand nine hundred and fifty-five dollars. Uh, to restore the counseling services um, that are being cut at Callis and uh, at Doty. I mean, technically there's no motion to amend. Yeah, because well, yeah, we have the first motion. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. So, so now we, we can go we back. The first that motion that carries, so um, we are okay. Yeah, I'm we're okay. Up. Yeah, sir. sorry. Sorry. Yeah. That's the motion. Wait, I'm sorry. Can I stop? I'm I'm having a hard time following. So you just voted in favor of an amendment, right? Uh, but yeah. you did, you haven't voted on the actual motion. Yeah, because we are trying to amend it again. Oh, so now you're voting on it. So you're gonna have two different Second. amendments, kind of on the floor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry to confuse you, but yeah. No, it's okay. That's just never happened, so I don't understand. Yeah. It. Okay. <laughs> we usually are not. <laughs> Chris, can you review what you said again? Because I wasn't hearing it. Sorry. I move to uh, amend the budget to add uh, eighty-eight thousand nine hundred and fifty-five dollars to restore uh, the counseling services that were proposed to be cut at uh, Callis uh, and at Dodi. A second to that. Who's second? second? Sorry. It was Natasha. Second. Natasha. Okay. Did you get that, Lisa? Natasha, second. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Ditto. Second. Any first, same as this good. <laughs> Just to elaborate on my last point, um, I think right. if this Try. does fail and approving this um, amendment and voting for this would further increase the risk of it failing. If it does fail, Better. we're going to be looking at much bigger changes, much bigger reductions than these items. So in a sense, this is setting us up for possibly even even larger reductions than any of this point. And I just want to point out, out of $900,000, we just cut away almost $200,000 from this. That's just... That's like, oh, I don't know. That's not an insignificant amount. That's, that's like, I don't know what percentage of the amount. Just low, I just know that one. That's not insignificant. I don't see any. That's the point. Yeah. I don't know. That, that's a good point. Can, can, can I ask a clarifying question? Because it wasn't on the slides tonight. The current school counselor, FT at Callis, is one. Mm -hmm. So this would take it down to a point. Four, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and the, I think my, so I would, I 
would vote against this, and my reasoning for it, again, is that after hearing, I do believe that there should be a school nurse in the schools each day, because I think it's a safety issue, and also I think it's gonna cause a lot of attendance issues, I think parents are gonna have to leave work. When we look at the student ratios to the counselors, that, that I think that we are being more equitable with these reductions. Dodi is a little, is higher than the rest of the schools. Callis is um, lower than the rest of the schools. And I think there's just a little give and take there. Um, but I don't see this as a, as much of a necessity. And I think to Kari's point, you know, the, I think the, the least that we can do is the most that we can do. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's late night. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. Maggie. I, I sit in on a lot of IEP meetings and a lot of evaluation meetings and access to counseling services in our community is incredibly challenging for school-aged children, let alone adults. And it's unfortunate that that is the situation, that community providers are very limited, and if this is the only place that they're going to access them, and during the school day is the only place, time and place that they're going to access them, and that's going to afford a child an opportunity to access their education, I'm 110% for it. I see kids underserved on a routine basis, and I do not think that there is a, um, that it is, um, that we are, likely even meeting the needs of the kids who could benefit from accessing counseling services in schools so that they can be regulated and participate and the social emotional le um, learning focus is fantastic but what if they can't access that learning and they need something additional because of extenuating circumstances so SEL is great as a general ed everyone gets access to it, but not everybody's needs are the same. Um, and some kids need more. And, um, you know, thinking about longevity, like the cost of the system is going to occur at a later point if we're not providing kids with the supports they need in their developmental years. And I, I hope that we're all thinking from that framework as well, that, you know, like, it's, it's going to come somewhere later if, if kids don't have what they need in order to achieve adulthood in um, a way that they can at least have the tools to be balanced if they aren't um, naturally or um, through classroom general education opportunities able to, to achieve those skills. Thank you, Maggie. Any other comments? I, you can both. Oh, yeah. I totally agree with everything that you say, but I think that that is an argument for having more counselors in all of our schools yeah. and not in these two in particular. Yeah. And this motion is for these two in particular. Mm -hmm. So right now the highest ratio, like the worst ratio that we have is at East Montpelier. So with your argument, we should be yes. adding a counselor yes. there. Mm -hmm. So is that what you're proposing? No, no. Because no. So I don't think you're... Pass. That wouldn't pass. But I don't think your proposal is, is equitable to, to the schools. So, so, so I, I, that's how I feel about Spanish. At <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, totally. I know. I, I get it. Like, we want, like, I know yeah, kids like are going to. to middle school with inequitable levels of access to a foreign language. Like, we're, and we just, like, we tiptoe around that one. So, I mean, this is what's on the table. But yeah, I do think we need more <coughs> counselors in every school. Or we need to find a, you know, Floor shared the Digger article that w was um, compiled by a variety of people who are in education, um, challenging the governor to prioritize education and counseling access, you know? So yeah, I mean, I, absolutely, but that wouldn't, Yes, I would like to see increased counseling in every building, for sure. But that wouldn't pass. But I don't think taking away is, is a solution, either. Mm -hmm. yeah, equity is not just a number. It's not a ratio. Correct. It's a need. 
and it, I haven't heard that the need is not there at Calus or Cody um, and other places. So to say we're not going to do it here because they need it there too, just doesn't. It, it, it just that's not that's doesn't equate for me. Um, and I, I think there is a need. We've we've heard. I mean, if we have social emotional structures in the school now, then they never existed uh, years ago, and it's there because there's a need, and so we can support that as much as possible. Okay. Any other? Lisa. I wanted to address the point because Maggie brought up our kids who need more supports than our general education provides, and there are state laws that require that we fulfill those needs regardless of what we have for a counselor in that school. So I think that it's very artificial to say that we're not going to be meeting those students' needs. We have systems in place and we have laws that we follow and procedures that we follow for those students who are not gaining or not able to access their education in the general ed classroom. And so that is a separate system from a, I'll say, general ed counselor. Thank you, Ursula. So, all those in favor of the motion as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. All those opposed, please say nay. Nay. Okay, we have the same. Yeah. Uh, can the aye raise their hands? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, seven. Did I have that right? Seven. So it's a tie, no? Do it again. Everybody who said A, raise your hands raise high your hand. and let floor count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I thought we had 14. Oh, no, Amelia's not here. So it'd be mm -hmm. six, nay. So the eyes have it. OK. So now we're back to the motion. So. And the budget? On the budget. On the budget, budget. Budget. budget motion with number. the new number. <laughs> New number is forty three million eight hundred ten thousand five hundred forty eight dollars. They said for Article you. Six in the morning. Forty three million forty three million eight hundred ten thousand five hundred forty eight dollars is the amount that the, the school board needs to be authorized to expend. So okay. That's <coughs> Article so we'll, Six. Yeah, we'll do the warrant separate, but that is the number so that you're voting informed on the on the budget. So now we need to. <coughs> Could you read it one more time, please? Mm -hmm. Forty-three million eight hundred ten thousand five hundred forty-eight dollars. I think we've discussed, and we still have a lot of uh, board work to do. So all those in favor of the budget, as all the discussion we had with the amendment as approved, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. I, I think just raise your hand, because we're going to end up in the same place. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. OK. Seven eyes. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Nay. <laughs> okay, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, motion five. The motion carries. The budget is approved with forty-three million eight hundred and ten thousand five hundred and forty-eight. Uh, let's move into the. Thank you, everybody. That was a rich discussion. Yeah. Uh, so. I'm going to just move to, the, I'm going to change the order and approve the budget warning while we have it fresh. So Article 6. If you need a yeah. copy, it is here. And then please remember, oh, before blank. you go, we got to sign this. So before you go, please stop to sign mm -hmm. there. And it got changed slightly, or she sent the updated one. Yeah. Is that the updated one? one? Yeah. This is the updated one, I'm pretty sure. You're going to have to come at, well, no, well, no. if we you're comfortable, sign. you sign the back page. Yeah. We sign a back page, and we'll attach it to the updated one with the number. Yeah. OK. Could I have a motion to approve the budget warning? No, we approve the budget warning. Thank you. Chris, uh, second. Natasha. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 
Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. I would just double check that this is the updated one because we, she just, told me she was going to fix the capitalized C in my name and mm. it's not. So. Okay. We're, we're going to have to change the, we need to add the number anyway, so okay. if, like Let's Megan said, if people are comfortable, we, we're going to just sign a, one sheet and then we're going to update the, the warning to make sure that... She might have just missed that piece because it looks like she has updated the amounts on the front. Yeah, so. yeah we can fix yeah. it. But that's the signature page. Oh, that's the signature, signature page. page. Oh, so then the board... I mean, board members can uh, stop by the office. Which is what we've done in the we've past. We've done it in the past, mm -hmm. yeah. So we're going to stop by the office to sign? By yes, when? Please. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, by when? It's morning at 8 a.m. Just because of my name, I don't care. No, I told them once I didn't care. I just wanted to make sure that the right one is printed for whatever else you have to correct it. It is yeah. correct in the front, but we can, I mean. I don't, I don't care. Are you sure? Are you as sure? Because it's still legally binding with them. Well, yeah, it, it, there, would be, <laughs> there would be enough signatures, so it would be. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't, I don't care. Okay. Again, that would, to make sure that that would save everybody a trip. I don't want to dismiss it, but it <laughs> yeah, would no, be, no. just no, we would no. have it to put it in the, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Michaela. Of course. I'm sorry about no, that. No. Okay, so we have. Uh, well, I can't seem to get your first name. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we have a button here, so we could start down there and just get it up. Uh, so we approve the warrant. Uh, then I need a. Mo we're gonna go back to the pre-qualified contractors, and I'm gonna count on my finance committee to make a motion. It's on page 30. Go ahead, Ursula. I move that the board pre-qualifies Local Electric LLC, Safety Systems of Vermont, and ENE Security LLC as bidders for the WCUUSD 2024 Security System Projects. Second. Thank you. So moved by Ursula, second by SAC. Any discussion or questions? Um, what happens if we get less than three bidders? We, uh, Suzanne Did sends a letter to the AOE and, and we get an okay. exception. Yeah. Yeah. Fill out a happens. form, ask yeah. for a waiver. Yeah. 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 Sorry. No, Takes a no. couple weeks for them to respond. Yeah. Yeah. It happens more it's often that we would like in these situations these days. There's not enough people in industry. Uh, okay. Uh, 5.4 uh, budget communication. I think we. Did we vote? Did we vote on that? We didn't vote? No. no. Oh, we didn't. Yeah. oh, yeah, we didn't Moved vote on that. Motion Sorry. and a second. Yeah. second. <laughs> Sorry. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay. Uh, budget communication. I think we, we need a little bit more time if people would be okay with uh, delegating that to the steering committee next meeting. Uh, right now we can just share it. what we shared before was the trifle has been finalized. We, we have that. We need to change the numbers, obviously, and, and we will send that out and then we need to start. Uh, we, are, we will own this presentation at our next meeting. We will have a community forum and then we'll go from there. That's the speed way of moving that along. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to move right into policy. Uh, Chris, I'm just going to ask for a motion because it's a second it. reading yep. to Fine. get moving. So, would you be willing to yep. make a motion? Yeah, move to approve um, policy F26 regarding security cameras in schools. Okay, could I have a second? second. Oh, okay. everybody, I, I'm going to give it to Keely because she's right next to me. And I already gave one to Natasha. So, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, any, any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay, uh, moving into. Sorry, who, who, sorry. who seconded that? Keely. Keely, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we're going to move into page uh, 36. Approve new teachers' resignations, leaves, and changes. Who's going to speed up to that? Looking at Ursula? I, I'm working on it. <laughs> I move it, I think. Who's going to do it? I move we approve an extended leave of absence for Christmas E. McGrath from February 20th to May 28th, 2024. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. Uh, thank you, Chris. 
Could you hear that, Lisa? Yes, thank you. All, right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. All right. Mm -hmm. There's one more. There's, There's two, a couple two more. more. A couple I, more. I, I, I move we approve here, Patty Gaston, as a long term sub for EMES. So, so, what did you say? <laughs> Chris, second. Chris, second. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so Zach and Chris. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. And then we have one more. I move we approve a change in position for Carrie Fitz from interventionist to special educator at EMES. Okay. Second. I, I think there was a Chris, you second? Chris. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. No. Mm -hmm. uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. So in, in the next part, we have the superintendent search, but to have that conversation, we need to go back and accept our superintendent's mm -hmm. uh, uh, resignation. So no. I need a motion. <laughs> <laughs> I, need a, I need a motion for that. Uh, Ursula? I move to accept the resignation of Megan Hoy, our superintendent, with much gratitude. So the motion would fail for lack of a second. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for democracy, that's all. Procedural advice here. Uh, who's, who's seconding it? Oh, second it. Uh, Diane. Diane is going to second it, and I'm going to make a little amendment to that motion. I think that what I want to say is that we accept the resignation. Uh, we are both pleased and saddened mm -hmm. to announce that you are resigning, and, but we're announcing that Megan Roy has been offered and has accepted an opportunity to work with St. Michael's College beginning on July 1st. Uh, we are excited for her and for the opportunities this position will provide to her, and we're grateful to her work in our district over the past couple of years. Over the coming six months, working collaborative, can everybody hear me? Mm -hmm. Collaborate. We will complete our strategic planning process, continue our efforts to bring greater equity into our schools, prepare a fair and responsible budget, and position ourselves for the challenges that lie ahead. Thanks to her hard work and vision, we feel confident in our district ability to continue to move forward while maintaining our values, sense of community, and positive student outcomes. Thank you, Megan, for the time, expertise, and deep care that you have shared with our communities. We wish you the best in your new endeavors. And we're excited about the impact you're going to have in the future generations of educators. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, all oh. oh. oh, those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay. Almost there. Um, approve the minutes. Could I have a motion? Do we need to do the superintendent's oh, oh, discussion? Yes. So I think because of the because of the time, I included the 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 both proposal proposals in the in the we included both proposals in the in the budget in well in the packet. Uh, we if we you guys would be willing to uh, approve that the steering committee could decide it. Two of the two consultants to hire and start spearheading the the, the search that would facilitate the um, uh, moving the process. Uh, sorry, I lost the words. It's been a long a <laughs> night, so I need a motion to basically just allow the steering committee to move forward with hiring a contractor, a, a consultant, not a contractor, but hiring a consultant. These two proposals are pretty equitable. One uh, thing that I, uh, one is more expensive than the other one, obviously. One thing that I did want to say, uh, Mike DeWeese uh, sent me an email just yesterday or a text, I can't remember right now. Uh, in their proposal, it's within those $12,000, I think it is, it is included three visits here and the stay here, which was not clear. It felt like it was additional. Mm -hmm. So if it's, uh, so that is included <coughs> within that proposal. And if you would allow with that, sort of those parameters between the nine and the 12,000 to the steering committee to hire a consultant, then we would come together again and 
and move ahead with creating a committee and being able to post, yeah, we, we just need to move quickly. But the, uh, the, the steering committee doesn't meet again until like the what? next month. Right? Yeah. Yeah, but I, mean, I I will call the steering committee to meet sooner than that. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. So it, it is a lot easier to bring the steering committee together than it is to bring the whole board together for a special mm -hmm. meeting. So, because and then and then that's not mean that doesn't mean that the steering committee is the only composition of the new hiring committee, right? We would have a hiring committee that is represented just like we've done before by the board, by community, by staff by the association, not just, you know, so that it was equally represented. The main thing that we need right now is to secure a consultant in order to move uh, ahead with the, with the process. So I'm, who do we have last time? Mike DeWeese. Mike, Mike did last time? Yeah. Because he did okay. Yeah. 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 Can we just pick one? Yeah, can't we just vote tonight? Or what, what oh, we, we, can we can vote tonight. Are we yeah. expecting any more proposals? No, those are the only two proposals. So I'll make a motion that we... Wait, don't uh, we have... Uh, isn't there one on the floor? Oh, is there? To have the steering I'm, committee... No, no, no nobody, has made, nobody, has, nobody has made a motion yet. Yeah, no, so we, I was, 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 I trying to make a motion, but. I'm channeling Ursula. Okay. I'd like to make the motion that we accept the um, proposal from Deweese and Deweese. Okay. Second. All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So we have a consultant and we'll move ahead. Okay. <coughs> Who seconded that? Sorry, Laura. Who seconded it? I did. Chris. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wait, who? Chris. Chris, Chris McVeigh. Okay, Sorry, you. Liz, I didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, approve the board. Uh, okay, now let's move into approving our minutes. Ursula. I move to we approve the minutes of January 3rd, 2024. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Sorry, sorry. Yeah, Ursula, <laughs> Ursula, that one yeah, that's okay. Ursula, Ursula, moved, Ursula moved it and Natasha seconded it. Yeah, thank you. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Approval of board orders. Who's going to jump at that page? We just signed them. Who's got it? Who's got it? Okay. Um, I'll move that we oh, the right board people? orders in the amount of eight million thirty thousand three hundred eighty-one dollars and forty-one cents. Second. Okay. Moved by Chris. Right. Second by yeah. Daniel. Uh, wait. The number. Go ahead. I, I know it's late, but there's one item that's extremely large. It's almost like a test. <laughs> what would you say? It's, say a a, it's just a transfer from Community mm -hmm. Bank over to Union Bank because Union Bank won the tax uh, award this year and so our interest rate is much higher so we did a, a nice transfer to put it in and get some more interest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I, I was ready because I kind of knew that one was going to be questionable <laughs> for you. So. Next to digit there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And there may be more sorry. of that in the weeks to can come. You, um, can you said the amount one more time. Sorry, guys. Can you Eight million thirty thousand three hundred eighty-one dollars and forty-one cents. Did you get it? No, I'm sorry. I'm having a really hard time. Um, give me one second and then say it again. I just have to switch tabs. Okay. Okay, eight million thirty 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 thousand three hundred eighty one dollars and forty one cents. Thank you. Okay. Phew, sorry. It's okay, it's an hour, it's, it's a long one for you. Uh, future agenda items. <laughs> work plan. Board work plan. Your next meeting. Do we vote? Oh, all those in, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye to approve our board orders. Aye. 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 aye to approve our board orders. Any opposed? <laughs> Any abstain? The motion carries. 
Next meeting is February 7th. We are here as U32's host of the first meeting, not to be confused with when we are often here. Um, so there will be a SEL presentation and some business items. Yeah, and then we'll probably do some budget. We, we budget we're working on some probably. budget communication that day and hold a budget forum that day. And we had added something on learning. I can't a budget forum? Now. Yeah, budget forum. A, oh, oh superintendent search. A, Yes. There's three weeks to go oh, to fill oh, out the, oh, uh, the superintendent performance evaluation, evaluation oh, survey. Yes. I checked earlier today and two of us. Oh, oh nice, nice work. Nice, nice work in the end that you will be able to. I finished. <laughs> Two. Oh, yeah, well, you said two of us. Oh, okay. oh well, <laughs> we're a team, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's open on my computer right now. Two. Yeah, you can submit. submit. No, no way. I've started it for us. Okay. Don't, don't let it linger. Yeah, mine's open too. Now we just can let the shit down on the computer. I know. I didn't take that last year. That was just the end. No, no, yeah, Dan, I'll give myself 30 just in case. Oh, we certainly could. Yeah. Go ahead, Daniel. I'm going to move to enter executive session. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, we have a... That was not here. Yeah, Joshua. I can move that we enter into executive session to include Megan Roy for a student residency request. Second by Daniel. Thank you. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, it was just like we. No, no, no. <laughs> so we go next? Yeah, let's go next. We have to vote for that. Yeah, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Sorry. Are we prepared to make a motion? Sorry, I'm sorry. I move that the board um, grants the residency request. request for student. Does that make sense? Yes. Second. For the remainder, For the remainder, remainder of, of 20. Oh, we want to say yes. that. Yes. yes. For the remainder of this school year 2024. Yeah. Second. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. And there we have board So reflection. I just want to say yeah. thank you to Megan and to um, for uh, moving forward, pre providing meals that yes. I think I, it's great appreciation for that and for Melissa for ordering. Yes, meal. and thank you to Brian. This is yes, U32's great. food service tonight's oh. the first night. That yes, yes. Great. So, uh, so yes. great appreciation for that. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we adjourn. Second. So move to adjourn, uh, Jordan, <laughs> Joshua. By <laughs> by. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> by Diane. Second no. by Ursula. He uh, needs a scruffier beard. <laughs> <laughs> a little more color in it. Okay. I move to wait. Did, who, 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 I ask for a vote before people walk Diane out the door. Diane moved to adjourn, and Ursula second. I second, and everybody said aye. Everybody aye. Because they're aye. leaving right now. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.